It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therada and Mary Jo Foley are here. Yes, Mary Jo's back from her trip to Japan. We'll show some pictures, talk a little bit about her visit uh, to the land of the rising sun. Also, we'll visit remotely uh, Taiwan, where the Computex conference is going on right now. Lots of new PCs and a whole lot more. Stay tuned. Windows Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly, episode 520, recorded Wednesday, May 31st, 2017. Digging up Jason Voorhees. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Cloudflare. More than 6 million websites, apps, APIs, and SaaS companies use Cloudflare services to weather whatever the internet throws at them. For a free online chat session with a Cloudflare support engineer, visit cloudflare.com slash twit. And by 23andMe, an online genetic analysis company that helps you understand your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA. Get over 75 genetic reports today and start exploring your DNA at 23andMe.com slash twit. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we talk about the latest news from Microsoft with us. Oh, I'm so glad she's back. We had a little portrait of you, Mary Jo Foley. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> to take your place, but nothing can really take your place. Oh. Back from... We, we refer to that portrait as Mary Jo B. Because <laughs> <laughs> underneath is Jo B. Jo B. <laughs> it was not even a very good yeah. paste job, I must say. Uh, I think some of Joe B's hair was just popping through the top there. In fact, I, I know it was. <laughs> yep. Um, so this is really this is kind of a layer cake of a of a portrait because <laughs> it started with Joe B and then they put a blonde wig on him and now there's. Yeah. You got to work on your Photoshop skills, Alex Gumbel. This is terrible. <laughs> it's pretty bad. You know when you get new portraits and you put them over the old one, and then over time it becomes like a geological. It is. It's excavation. <laughs> hey, Alex, yeah. can we get a uh, uh, um, um, on the F key? Can I have a little F key that, that pops up Mary Jo Foley? That would be. Oh my God. How hard is that to do? Brad Sam's there he is. Yeah, we need Apparently good... it's way too easy. <laughs> I've been told we need a good clean crop of you, Mary Jo. Okay. <laughs> we need... Well yeah. then. <laughs> Can you put a green screen up for just a moment? <laughs> uh... <laughs> All right, enough silliness. Uh I have some Microsoft news and then I realized boy, am I a moron. <laughs> I bought a Windows uh PC. Mm hmm a laptop for uh, the, like the week before Computex. What am I thinking? Mm. Oh, well. Will, will I mean, any honestly, of those slick computers announced at Computex be out in the next month? No. Oh, good. Okay. No, I think a lot of this <laughs> stuff is later in the summer. I'm actually. I actually didn't cover any of the specifics because most of it is kind of me too stuff. And I don't mean, I mean, that's maybe not the right way to say it. Uh, there's nothing like dramatic happening, right? You know, Asus comes up with awesome new Asus computers. Their computers were already beautiful and thin yeah. and it's really just, attractive. And the new ones are too. Yeah. It's you know? kind of like the seasonal update. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just want to, I mean, I, it's not on your list, but I just wanted to tell you I bought <laughs> in this, see, you're going to, I don't know if this is going to make you happy, but I, uh, mm -hmm. I got so mad at Apple for, crapping up the macbooks and i really wanted a, 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 a powerful system and i've been liking sure. since i got this studio and the surface book i've been liking windows 10 more and more well wow. so i said why don't i look you know, at it's only taken us 10 years of this podcast i know to <laughs> i've come full circle <laughs> let me ask you a question um i don't know if it's an optical effect but are the hinges on that computer goldish or no they look they're gold. silver but they're oh they are so prominent silver. They're a little more prominent than uh, I would okay. like. Okay, it's something about the light made them look gold yeah. because usually they are silver. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So this is a, a Lenovo ThinkPad. This is the X1. I wanted an X1 Carbon for a long time, but you know I kind of like this two-in-one form factor of the Yoga. So this is an X1 Carb uh, Yoga. So it folds all the way over. Mm -hmm. And the other reason I bought it. Remember I asked you. You perhaps mm -hmm. perhaps weren't taking me seriously. Which one is it that the keys That's right. suck up into the inside of the? Yep. Yep, and the, this is the one that they call it the Wave Keyboard. It's a little strange because it makes it gives you a little uh, hiccup in your giddy up when you're moving the 
um, the screen because it's got to it's got to you know kind of engage the keys and draw them inside. And I'm sure it'll right. break, but I like it. I really like it. The other reason I think I went what I is, would have said at the time because I asked them about that and all right, I asked actually I asked a different actually I asked HP about that. And um, I said, you know, come on, everyone's so concerned about the keyboard at the bottom, but that's not really a big issue, is it? And they said, actually, it's a huge issue. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, okay. yeah. So, well, this has yeah, little, if you look at it, it has little um, stops in the yeah. corners that are actually that become the feet. So the right. keyboard withdraws enough so that these little, they're not very high, but they're enough to become the feet, which I like. Yep. I love the OLED. And I love the touch screen. That was ultimately the real reason that I, I, I said, I'm giving up on you, Apple. I, touch, touch makes sense. You saw I use the fingerprint readers very quick. Mm. Uses Windows Hello. They are yep. now using the Windows trackpad instead of the Lenovo yes. trackpad. And that's much better. Boy, is that that's nice. Right. And it's Precision. it's probably the best key. I mean, it's not the old Lenovo keyboard, but the old ThinkPad keyboard. But it's a pretty darn nice keyboard. I feel pretty good about it. Yep. Um, so all in all, very happy. Battery life is a little disappointing. They say <laughs> fifteen. Well, which hours. which display, did you get a four K display? Yeah, it's four K OLED. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why. That's going to cut battery life by two thirds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's they say fifteen sorry, by hours one, by one third, depending on the you know spec. They don't actually spec it out specifically for that. Uh, but I'm but if I put it in battery saver, which by the way. I pretty much do because it seems no reason not to. It isn't noticeably slower. I'm mm -hmm. getting about four hours per charge of heavy oh, that's work. Actually not, that's not great, though. <laughs> it should be better. And it's three it without be better, the battery yeah. saver. That's a little disappointing. I can't uh, charge it. What, the other thing I love about it that Apple just refuses to do, it's got ports. Thank yep. God it's got ports. Uh, it's got <laughs> three USB 3 ports. It's got two Type-C and Thunderbolt 3 ports. Type-C power and mm -hmm. unlike the HP that Mary Jo and I have, uh, you could power it with any old Type C mm -hmm. adapter. You need enough wattage, but it, but like the MacBook adapter works fine. It also has full size HDMI on this side, which is great. They, I wish they didn't do this, uh, but I understand why they did. They put a proprietary mm -hmm. mini RJ45 Ethernet port on it, so you have to buy their yep. dongle. Well, I mean, you could still use a normal USB. You totally can. Ethernet. Or Thunderbolt. Yeah. In fact, I bought a Thunderbolt yeah. adapter, which yeah, exactly. is just as fast. And then the, the other weird thing, because I got the OLED screen, I can't use the WAN. I can't use the SIM, but it does have a SIM card slot. And then I didn't read it very clear, carefully. I thought it had an SD card slot. It has a micro SD card slot. Yeah. I, like I, a, I, don't right, know, right. I mean, I, it's because it's got to make it small, right? I don't know what I'll use it for. But um, I'm really, so far, loving it. This is going to be for yep. my trip. I like the material in that, too, and it's super light. It is. It's under three pounds. Um, this is the one. This is going to be my Lightroom photo editing computer. But I also uh, downloaded a bunch of stuff on Netflix because I can do this in the plane. And with a, I have now have a 4K, 14-inch screen that I can watch uh, movies and stuff on. Nice. T tented, right? Tented. So, tented. <laughs> you can, it lays flat, too, so you get that yeah. kind of awesome thing where you can stand it up in front of you on a plane if you want to. Right. The only thing is weird. It's 16.9. I really, I really like the three yeah. two that Microsoft does. When you're reading something, a web page in portrait mode, you just, sure. it's just, it's just. Well, you know, so here's strange. what's interesting about that. Um, I, I've talked to PC makers about three by two, and I don't know why they're not doing it. But one of the big design trends that those guys are doing on that particular machine that Dell did with the XPS 13, obviously that HP is doing on their new machines, is these kind of near bezel-less displays. Yes. And yes. the only way they have to go in that same form factor now is to actually go three by two, which would just fill the rest of the space. And it would provide you with more room vertically. I know, I wish. Which is where you need it for reading. It would be, be perfect. Would be nice. Yeah, I'm thinking they, I, I bet some of these companies do it. It. I mean, I have to say that I think for, you know, 16.9 is great for video viewing. And, um, oops, that's the wrong. It's a very dark movie. Here it is. <laughs> um, so f this is a 4K video. Yeah. Um, and this is this is going to be great. Uh, I don't know what's happening. Is it not playing? Yeah, there it is. Um, this is just going to be really great for. Don't ruin uh, it for me, Leo. It's just the credits. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm ruining it for you because they brought back the old credits, so now you know. Spoiler <laughs> alert. <laughs> We're talking about uh, Hasa cards, which I'm down. I've downloaded. 
Thank you, oh, Netflix. Nice. We watch stuff like yeah. yeah. We were watching, we started episode one last night, and Lisa said, why don't we just watch this on the plane? Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, isn't it? Yep. So I didn't mean to hijack this fine show, but I just wanted to show you my new my new baby. Well, yeah, at least good. it's not a MacBook. I know. Yeah. <laughs> that could have been worse, right? You know, so <laughs> I have bad. I, mean, I noticed you haven't put Linux on it yet or anything. So no, I mean, that's good. my old this MacBook to uh, Karsten because he broke his, and um, mm. I still have a MacBook. You know, obviously, I'm not going to be. I have to use Macs, but um, this is a Linux machine. This is a Windows machine. Um, I think the world is changing. That's a, This is an old Dell uh, that's running uh, Linux. The world is changing. And Apple, I think, is really abandoning desktop computing, which is very sad. Mm. So this is the second generation X1 Yoga. You don't want to know the price. As configured about oh, well, 20. It, well, with that screen, it's going to be 25, 26. 20, you, boy, you nailed it. Very good. Yeah. Very good. No, I have a non-Yoga, non-4K X1 Carbon that's a, that doesn't have nice. touch. And it's a little... Annoying, actually. Oh, I had to have touch. Oh, I didn't mention. Yeah, no, me too. I didn't mention rechargeable pen. And it doesn't need a pen loop because the pen <laughs> goes right here. Although it's not as good a pen as the Microsoft. Yeah, because it's so small it's and teensy. thin. But it's, it's kind of a little charging thing there. Mm -hmm. And it does, yeah, it doesn't erase. You have buttons on it. It's kind of, I mean, I, I'm spoiled by the Microsoft pen. That's, a, that's, that's the way to do a pen. But you don't need a pen loop for this. So. <laughs> See that? How long is your flight? It's not that long. You just not came back long. from a very long flight, right? How long was your flight? 20 hours? Uh, coming back was hell. Um, <laughs> I came back through Seattle Aye. because I flew out of Seattle. So it was nine and a half hours from Japan to Seattle and then Another, six more yeah, to New York. Total. So we it's not I too mean, bad. It's like six and six because we fly to Miami. Yeah. And yeah. then from Miami to Lima, Peru. And so it's like six mm -hmm. and six. Mm. So, but That's I think pretty I good. would go to Asia more if I lived on the West Coast. Yes, you, you, know, you right? would. The direct flight <laughs> stuff. I think it's well, easy. I mean, nine hours is tough, but it's if it's direct, it's not so yeah. bad. It's not too bad. Nine yeah. hours to Europe would be terrible because that wouldn't be direct, right? Well, see, it I'm be, jealous. Right. You get to go to Europe. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and it's yeah. easy for you to go to Europe. It's as easy for you to yeah. go to Europe as it is for me to go to New York, and I'm jealous yeah. about that. I love that. Well, that's why we do it. That I I had gone to Microsoft <laughs> so many times one year. I said, God, you, it seems like we should be able to fly to Europe in the amount of time it takes me to get to Seattle. And right. I, you do one of those radius things on the map, and Shannon pops up, and I said, Let's go to Ireland. There you go. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. Ireland. It's the Seattle of the East. Yeah, <laughs> it is in weather ways and many other ways. <laughs> no, that's right. So um, you, Mary Jo, were in Japan. I didn't realize this before. Yeah. Um, four years ago, I went. Um, so, same kind of trip or? Yeah, it was vacation. Um, this last time I went by myself and this time I went with a couple of friends. And on a uh, tour this time, right? Yeah, it was. This trip was so different. It was two weeks for one thing. The last trip was 10 days. But just technology wise for me, this trip was so different. Um I got to use Google Fi on this trip, yes. which Paul isn't that a revolution? Is that it was a, unbelievable? Yeah, I could use data everywhere in yeah. Japan that we went the whole time, and I bet it was fast. That's awesome. It was fast. I shared it with the other two people who didn't have any data. I never, I never even approached the limit on my plan, even though I used it well, constantly. Well, Fi is ten bucks a gigabyte, right? And you just yeah. keep using it, and it's the, it's the same yeah. price in the U.S. as yeah. it is in Japan. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm great. bringing Phi to uh, Peru and uh, Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. You yeah. can use it there. And That's I'm actually good. going to Tokyo. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not Tokyo. I'm doing a uh, similar tour, a tour, a Tauk tour of Japan in the spring. Oh, so cool. So I'm going to get it. Okay. I looked at your pictures. You took a lot of pictures of food. Well, I did. <laughs> by the way, from the outside, that was the big difference between this trip and the last trip. Because I remember you went to Japan yeah. and I was like, oh, my God, I can't wait to see photos. And then yeah. I waited and I waited and I waited. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I didn't. Yeah. You know, this time you could actually post photos because you were just online. Isn't that cool? I, I could. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that it was cool? nice. The other, the other thing that, Leo, you're going you're gonna to use this a lot, and I used it constantly, was Google Translate. Um, the oh. offline version. Well, oh, that's your <laughs> Vietnam vacation. I got the wrong one. Let me go to. The, oh, let's see. Yeah, I put I put some photos on Instagram and I put some up on Facebook the other day. But um, there's a sway, right? Yeah, I made a, a little sway on Facebook. I love I um, love how these sways look. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But Google Translate. This was another thing that I didn't really have because I didn't I couldn't use my phone the last time I was in Japan. This time I could and. 
whenever I went to a restaurant, because I'm mostly vegetarian, but I eat seafood, and I would just like put that into the translation thing and show the server and they'd be like, oh, okay. That's awesome. Yeah. And did you take <laughs> pictures of like, because they'd also will translate menus and stuff. Did you use yeah, that? Yeah. So that was fantastic. You could take your phone and just hold it over a menu and you didn't even need to take a picture. It was translating it in real time yep. while you just held it over the description. It was fantastic. It was real. I was telling Paul, it was really funny because a lot of people who are working in restaurants in Japan knew about Google translate and what it could do. So they would just grab the phones out of our hands, pull up translate, <laughs> say something in Japanese and then have it oh tell us gosh. what they were trying to tell us. Oh, that's hysterical. It was great. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, excellent. that's yeah. kind of what, that's like an ad for Google. It's kind of what you imagine. Yeah. Can it I show really you your sway or is this private? Yeah, go ahead. Nope, yeah. there's nothing in there that okay. can't be shown. <laughs> yeah. Mostly it's pictures of food that makes me, make me so hungry. <laughs> the beginning, I did some food and some transportation pictures. I did a bunch of different things. It's really good. This is, and sway is beautiful. I just really love how this comes up. I'll, you know, I should probably do sway of my trip. I know. It makes it nice because you don't have to know how to use any special programs. You just load your photos in and you hit remix and it gives you oh, all the different. That's fields. all you did. Yep. And you added some text, which was nice. What is that green? Is that wasabi? Text. What is that green stuff? No, that was um, matcha, green matcha oh, uh, dessert. Yeah. Oh, I love matcha. Oh. It was like a sticky dessert. Look at these yeah. Snoopy cookies. Yeah, they were cute. <laughs> so funny. And you yeah. went to a, a bunch of temples? Yeah, we went to a lot of World Heritage sites um, That's what I throughout to do. Japan. Yep. I like it that they put aprons on their statues. <laughs> How come they're hanging their laundry out? <laughs> oh, is that it? <laughs> so you divide yeah, those, up. So here's, mo here's transport. Yep, I showed some of the ways we get around. It was great. We um, used Japan Rail Pass, and then we went on the buses and... They have something that's like the Metro card that you can buy and you can use it. What's cool is you can use it on buses wow. and trains and everything, okay. but you also can use it to buy drinks and stand in machines, which is cool. Did, uh, did you stay at a Rio con? It looks like you might've stayed at a, yep. We stayed in a couple, oh, um, fun. sleeping on the floor looks fun, but it's not fun after a few <laughs> days. <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine a, like a futon on the floor. I mean, yeah. Oh, man. At one mattress. point, I was like, I can't stand up. My leg is not. <laughs> <laughs> I fell asleep in bed. Uh, wow. These are great pictures. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, really neat. And and by the way, I hate to admit it, but you took them all with a 6P, right? I did. Yep. A Google, uh, a Google phone using Fi. I know. I feel like I'm a Google poster child this week. I used all the Google stuff. <laughs> well, you got to use what works. I know. Yep. It's it, well. That's the thing. I mean, uh, they really and after Google I/O, I mean, you really see this kind of compelling. I know, and it's slow. It's not like it's not like uh, big it's reveals not, you every know what, five though? minutes. So you missed this because you were away last week. I had that conversation with Megan. You know, I, Microsoft did their build conference, and there was some good stuff there, obviously. And then Google did I/O, and I I, I watched and I rewatched those keynotes back to back and all I could think was like Google is just they're just kind of nailing them all like one at a time it's all like it's really gradual. specific product stuff yeah. that makes sense that real people will need and want and I I, I really I'm very troubled um, by what I see on the Microsoft side right now I'm mm -hmm. I have to say I'm a little troubled <laughs> because <laughs> I see Google eating the world yes mm -hmm. And <laughs> yeah, oh no, it's this and I'm is a, a Google fan, I mean, and you see, and I'm a, I'm with you, Mary Jo, like Google Translate yeah. and, and Google Fi, but yeah. but but pretty soon it's like Google Google this, Google that, Google yeah. everything. Yeah, I know, I know, but it works. That's the thing. It I, works. I, I, I I I remember a week or so ago, I was thinking through like, what's the central issue that we have here? Aside from we don't want one company to dominate everything, mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons that we like Microsoft, certainly for me, is that. They're selling you something very directly. They make a word processor, you use it, you pay them to use the word processor. It's a it's a one-to-one -one relationship. You're paying for the service you're receiving. Everything with Google is kind of implicit, right? They're kind of taking some of your personal information, they're selling it to advertisers. 90% of your uh, their revenues are coming from ads. And I, I think a lot of us have a little issue with that, have a big issue maybe with the privacy implications. Um, but... You know, 
I have to say, at least they're using this power for good, right? There's there's a whole don't be evil kind of thing around Google, which I find kind of pukey. But the truth is they are releasing tremendous personal computing products and services. Yeah. You know, and they, they don't are. have to. That's what's they, scary. They don't have to. But it's they compelling. Are. And that's what's scary. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, it's uh, I go willingly into this maw, but I fear that the alligator at some point will mm. close his jaw. Um, yeah. But boy, sure. I mean, look, I mean, and the thing that's really interesting is every single thing you did in Japan, Mary Jo, Google was able to track you, add it to and, the oh, yeah. database of Mary jo <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, they, and now yeah. I don't think their goal is anything more intrusive than than making advertising to you more to your liking frankly to your interests mm -hmm. that's really what they're trying to do but boy they do have yeah. a lot of data about us yeah, i they know do. they yeah every photo was stamped with exactly where we were when we right. were there um and then they even um I don't use Google Photos really. I use OneDrive more for my photos, but Google Photos was taking my pictures and creating like panoramas you out end of up things. Wanting to use Google Photos, I know. Then I'm like, oh, that came out really nice. Yeah. Maybe I should use yeah, that. That's, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. Come on I, in. The, the water's photos, fine. It, it does that a million times better than OneDrive. Yeah. Well, and, and the so, new lens features me, they announced. There's going to be I all know. sorts of reasons you're going to want to use this. Yeah, David Painter is asking me on Twitter right now, did I try Microsoft Translate? I did not, but somebody else who was on the trip with me did use that. And we all agreed that Google Translate was doing better than Microsoft was. Did it make like a sad balloon <laughs> deflating sound? <laughs> well. It mostly, it, it wasn't as um, quick. And it also, I don't think it had as many of the features offline that yeah, Google right. Translate did. Yeah. And it doesn't yep. tie to maps. Well, I guess you got Bing Maps. Yeah, I, we were using Google Maps. The problem so, is, yeah. I don't. I didn't even know Microsoft had a translate. I just it, Google translates such a default, sure. even on a, an iPhone. Yep. That you by the way, that, that you have just reached the tip of the iceberg of the problem that is Microsoft losing mobile. That they don't right. have this yeah. natural audience out it's there in your face. That will just get all their new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a huge problem. Yeah, it's hard to compete uh, yeah. when you don't yep. when you're not the platform. Was and Microsoft like the knows effect or whatever anybody. the you know the the bundling the natural you know bundling capabilities that you get when you own the dominant platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and who knows that better than Microsoft? For years, they were the dominant platform, and they yeah, must right. they they must with kind of some sadness and regret feel like they've lost that. Yeah. Well, you know, opportunity yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I brought you all down. But I, actually, no, that, this is, uh, by the way, this is basically all we talked about last week. This is a big thing. And I, I, I you yeah. know, Apple's thing has not occurred yet. WWDC it's, may Apple reset this conversation no, somewhat. No, but no, I won't. Uh, I, <laughs> I just looked at the Google stuff and I, uh, frankly, yeah. it's alarming how right minded it all is. The Google Home thing, right? When they announced that last year, I thought it was going to take over the world. They released it and it was garbage. They've improved mm -hmm. it so much in six months. And they just announced things like free, uh, hands-free calling from your house. Yeah, that's mind-boggling. That I mean, does for us multiple old users folks. and will do caller ID based on who's calling. I, I, like, yeah, seriously. Yeah, I, yeah. I, it, it's, they just get it. Yeah. It's, you know, you can hate Google all you want, but... <laughs> well, no, this, and, but this, you know, it's funny. I love Google, and this makes me more afraid than ever. I don't mean, I mean, you. I mean one, one, can. one. No, I know, but I'm just. But so that's my point. That. Is that uh, I'm now worried because it, it, yeah. you know that kind of dominance uh, has a well. Yeah. There's never been a case in the tech industry where a dominant company abused their power. <laughs> no, I, I don't. Know. I don't think happen. we need never. to worry about that. That doesn't right. happen. Right. Thank God. You know? <laughs> everyone cares about the customer first. Right. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. Let's talk about Computex. But before we do that, mm -hmm. would you mind if I mentioned our fine sponsor, the people who make this entire operation possible, the folks at uh, Cloudflare? They do so much stuff. <laughs> We've been doing the ads, and I talked to the Cloudflare uh, uh, rep, uh, and she said, you got, you, you're talking about too many features. I said, well, you have too <laughs> You've got all these features. So... <laughs> 
You, Cloudflare, of course, very well known for their DDoS uh, mitigation. No matter how big or small your site, if suddenly you get hit, whether it's through popularity or bad guys, Cloudflare will, for the same cost, you know, they don't even, you know, and some people would say, oh, well, we're going to charge you more now that you're so popular. For the same cost, will provide you with DDoS protection. But they also run a uh, an a, uh, internet firewall service. In fact, one of the, one of the reasons Cloudflare offers free Cloudflare subscriptions is because they want you to use Cloudflare on your blog or your website because that way they get more signals about what's going on in the internet and they can improve their product. But that's just I'm not it's also a CDN. They have a more than 110 servers all over the world bringing your content closer to your customers which speeds up your performance. Performant DNS, caching, content optimization, load balancing. How can I not talk about all this stuff Cloudflare does? It's just, <laughs> it's a great company. And if you have questions about Cloudflare, I want you to go to cloudflare.com slash twit and get a chance for free to talk to Jameson Sundell. He's the greatest guy. I love Jameson. Love his accent, love his smarts, and he will answer your questions about Cloudflare. And this is free and only because you're listening to Windows Weekly right now. So go to cloudflare.com slash twit. No matter what you need cloud on the net for whatever your site's doing or your app, join the 6 million websites, apps, APIs, and SaaS companies that use Cloudflare. I didn't even get into how Cloudflare helps you uh, eliminate getting locked in in your cloud computing platform. Prices range from free to $20 a month to $200 a month. But look, find out more at cloudflare.com slash twit great people too we know them very well for years been friends with them paul therott mary joe foley neither one of you spent any time in taipei this week <laughs> shocked shocked why don't you just stay in uh, tokyo mary joe you could have just hopped over i should have didn't think of it no oh well <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, it, it's there's a it's a it's got to be a hard show to go to, but it is it is what is yeah. it? A, it's a hardware manufacturer show, basically, the Taiwanese companies. Yeah, what? How do they consider it? Do they consider it a place where consumers go? No, right? I don't think so. I don't think so. No, no. no. But the timing is good, right? This is back to school season type stuff, or at least holiday. Yeah. It's better than con or a CES for that kind of stuff. Yeah, true. Yeah, they kind of show off things that are coming usually by year end, if not early next year at Computex. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, micro so Microsoft had a keynote at Computex early this morning. It was not live streamed or blogged or anything, but there they did talk about um, some of the Windows 10 on ARM PCs that are coming. Oh, they call that them we always heard about connected, right? Yeah, they're calling them always connected connected um, and that brand always connected refers to both intel based and arm based pcs that have lte and now eSIM technology uh, that are going to be coming what makes so it always connected is it just a wan is it just lte or yeah it's like yeah. you can you can um buy a buy a data plan using the eSIM technology and manage it through the store um for windows 10 right. i believe what but is you, it? I mean, sim? It's just it's just, it's an embedded sim. Right, built-in sim, electronic oh. sim. Remember when the yeah. well, like the iPad does this basically. Yeah, and it's a problem on the iPad because when AT and T gets a hold of the sim, they lock you in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is uh, this this is a different. It's a standard, and it, it the point of this is you that can't happen. So you oh, can good. switch okay. carriers yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right. So until until. Today, we didn't know which vendors were going to be making the first Windows 10 ARM-based, always connected PCs. But now we know. The first group are going to include Asus, HP, and Lenovo, Microsoft said. Um, they also listed the carriers and mobile operators that are going to support this. So there's AT&T, um, British Telecom, Vodafone, Orange, a whole bunch of them. They did have China Mobile as one of the companies listed, but they've taken them off the list. By the way, saying why? <laughs> thank you for that because I got a complaint from someone at Microsoft's PR firm who said, "Could you please?" I don't. They said, "I don't know where you got China Mobile from, but if you could remove that from your little list." And I was like, "Guys, 
you think I added China Mobile to the list? I obviously got <laughs> I just it made you. that up. <laughs> no, it was really, it was kind of weird the way it was phrased. Yeah. But anyway. Um, yeah. No yes, Verizon. China Mobile was on there. Yeah. No Verizon. Um, hmm. Not too surprisingly. Yeah, I they guess, don't get along so well, do they, Microsoft? Not so well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, we. what's interesting is I'm, I'm curious when these are coming because – when Qualcomm had its last earnings call, they said by Q4 of this year, there'd be Windows 10 on ARM devices in market. But then yep. uh, today, when I asked for an update, they said soon. And I said, <laughs> so does that mean Q4? Does it mean sooner? And they yeah. said, we have nothing more to say. And in their um, blog post about <laughs> this, they very say- Sean Spicer of them. <laughs> I know. But I answered your question. Post, asked and answered. <laughs> In the blog post, I, when I it talks about the operators, it says coming within a year. Yeah, I I, I don't actually think um, the story on this has changed. I think we're going to see okay. one or two devices this yeah. year, very late. But mm -hmm. then it's what it's really gonna it's really gonna happen throughout 2018. Yeah, that's what I think too. Yeah. Yeah. So I it, like just this idea. I, I really you like it. Well, yeah. you know, I have mixed feelings, and I notice a lot of like Google stopped putting. In fact, most of the I don't think any of the Chromebooks have uh, LTE, right. and yeah. I think the theory is well, you already have an LTE device, I, and you yeah, just I, uh, oh. hotspot it. Yep. yep, and then you you tether it to charge the phone, so you don't have to worry about that. Right. And yeah. what's the big deal? I, I don't. I know. You I don't, know I, do you remember, Paul? You probably remember this when when mm -hmm. Microsoft introduced which Surface was it that had LTE? The three Surface the three. L yep. three had yep. LTE built in. And a lot of users were asking for Microsoft to come out with more surfaces with built-in LTE. And I remember them saying to me, we're not going to do that because um, we don't really think that's how people use these devices and no one really wants it. Mm -hmm. um, and now here they are, right? <laughs> so I, I well, guess I mean, they things, decided... things change, you know. Things change, um, yeah. Okay, but yeah. I mean, I just think it's how, a Project Fi on one of these devices would be interesting, right? Because oh, yeah. you don't pay for it unless you use it and... That's kind of cool. I mean, I th I think yeah. the big problem with the SIM stuff in devices like this has always been that you pay for it, basically, right? I'm sure there are right. exceptions to that. I know I know there are pay-as-you-go type things. But, you know, for a long time, this stuff was very expensive, and it was, uh, you know, a minimum or a fee or, like, just a fee every month. And yeah. unless you know you're going to be using it regularly that way, and I don't yeah. think a lot of people do, it's expensive. I know. I know. Yeah, I've had I've had people say to me they wanted the built-in LTE because they couldn't get a good cell signal at their home, um, so they couldn't tether their phone to their PC. There were a lot of things like that, but um, yeah, I, I'm I'm uh, curious I, I, how this will work and what the data plans are going to look it like. It could be the work is paying for it, and you want it separate right. from your home phone for that reason. It's mm -hmm. just easier if there's direct billing. There uh, there are always yeah. reasons, but right. I just I still don't see this as a big big deal. Yeah. I'm, you know, they didn't show off any of these ARM-based devices during the keynote, as far as I know. So, you know, people are saying we haven't seen benchmarks. We don't really know what these things look like. We just have the list now of vendors and people supporting that. Uh, just gonna them be PCs. I, I this is yeah. not going to be like when you buy a hybrid car and it's really ugly for some reason. I think <laughs> HP or whoever will basically sell one, you know, some number of models that are the yeah. same, just like they do today between AMD and Intel chips. Yeah, probably. You know? Yeah. Do we know right. what the performance hit will be in uh, ARM? Or will this? No. Seven. It will be seven. Seven. That's a good number. <laughs> That's a good number. No, we don't we know. Don't. I mean, I, it's, I bet it varies by app even. I, it's going to yeah. vary by workload. Yeah. It's, you know. And then there's going to be emulation, right, um, to run non-store apps on this. And, and Microsoft has yeah. said that that there won't be a performance hit, but we haven't been able to see that so far in, I, in real life. I don't know a lot about this, but for example, I know that on uh, with the Samsung Chromebooks, there's a there's a plus and a pro, and one is Intel and one is ARM, and they both have a performance problem in one area. The ARM version runs Android apps really well, but it's kind of slow running native Chrome stuff. On the Intel version, it's the exact opposite. The Chrome stuff works great, but then the yeah. ARM apps or the uh, yeah. mobile apps, the Android apps, don't work well. Oh, that's interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. That makes um, sense. I, it has to kind of be like that a little bit, right? I mean. I'm, you know, like the the trick is that the basic experience works, 
and that the stuff you need, whatever it might be, maybe you need, uh, well, Microsoft Office is a bad example. Maybe you need Photoshop or something. And for some reason, if that works well enough for you, mm-hmm. you know, it, then it could be okay. Yeah. Also, um, you probably remember when, when Microsoft first announced they were doing Windows 10 on ARM late last year, Terry Meyerson said to me, we're going to have this work on six-inch devices I think you said 10 yeah. and 14. Yeah. Um, the only devices that have been talked about so far, including at Computex, are PCs. Nobody's talked about a phone running this. And Meyerson also said to me that the emulation wouldn't be on the phones. So it sounds like you could potentially have an OEM make a phone running Windows 10 on ARM, but it wouldn't have the Intel emulation. I don't, I don't think that's, that. I think we're mixing things up there. I don't think that's do. exactly right. Yeah, I think yeah. when he said phones, he just meant Windows 10 mobile. In other words, we're not bringing yeah. the x86 emulation stuff to mobile. I think that's what he meant. Because he, he told mm-hmm. me specifically that phones were not part of this yeah. right away. You know, that right. we'll, you know, we'll see what happens in the future. But this first yeah. gen, th- there's no phone. You know, it's, right. it's right. they're PCs. Yeah, the six-inch device, whatever that you want to call that phone, mobile device, whatever, that's not supported yet. You're right. He's, that's yeah. going to come later, but it's going to be supposedly is in the plan and is coming. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know, but I, I, yeah. th- this, uh, we have something in here somewhere, I think about, yeah, some mobile stuff. We'll talk about that later, yeah. but you know, my Microsoft's mobile story is, um, uh, it's, it's not great. <laughs> I was <laughs> no, waiting for your adjective. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure Messy. how to say that. You know, it's, uh, it's a little confusing. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we want to say anything about the mixed reality headsets they showed off. Yeah, yeah, those also. are kind of cool looking. But uh, I, you know, is this it, Hololens? What is this? No, that's the. This is the thing. I, I, there was. The more you learn about stuff, the more disappointing it is. You know, and the the when well when this was first presented, right back before it was called Windows Mixed Reality. What was it called before? Windows Holographic or something? Yeah, Windows Holographic. Um, if you think about that name or you think about the name mixed reality, both of those things suggest that this thing will be something like HoloLens, right? I, I, it's not, you know, normal to expect it to be a full HoloLens experience, but surely it's more than just VR. Mm. And it's not, not really, right? It's, these are VR headsets with one addition that makes them different from a traditional VR headset. And that is that the tracking functionality which to date on PCs has been through external sensors that, you know, maybe are in poles, you put them up in the corner of the room or whatever, HTC Vive or Oculus Rift, for example, are integrated into the headset. And so it does that positional tracking kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. But it is a VR headset. Your vision is occluded, if that's the right term. You you only see what's in the, you know, you can't see the world. So it's not a, it's not like HoloLens, which literally mixes right. virtual and real realities it's it's just vr with yeah. built-in tracking so it's just vr is the way to say it it's it's more maybe more advanced in this one way than most vr it's more yeah. advanced than phone based vr because they don't really have that in the phone solutions right. um but it's really just vr mm. do you you know, I was thinking about this the other day because people, a uh, number of people at Build tried on the um, new mixed reality headsets and and said yeah. it's VR. Like I don't, I don't get well, what, why they're calling it something yeah. else. That's right. Uh, but do you remember the promotional video they did when they first renamed this to mixed reality? Because they what they showed in that was people wearing Hololens and people wearing these mixed reality headsets being able to see the same things simultaneously. But that's yeah. not even possible, right? I mean, well, how, can, you know, so, how could you? <laughs> yeah, there's a Windows mixed reality platform that used to be called Windows Holographic mm-hmm. that does present a variety of capabilities. But there's right. no real crossover right, between Hol- right. from HoloLens to these things. So yeah. the, the mixed reality headsets are at the low end of the scale and the HoloLens is kind of at the high end of the scale. HoloLens, is, remember, is completely untethered. The computer's in the device. It's not doesn't rely right. on a computer. Um. And it does do that, what we used to call augmented reality thing, you know, that, but yeah. So 
it is possible to write an app that you could all participate in it together. But the things you would see, I would have to think would be slightly different because with the HoloLens, yeah. you probably are always going to see the the real world as well. So this is, okay, see, I, when I hear mixed reality, I think virtual, I mean, augmented reality. Right. Because mixed yeah, is mixed, the real world and the virtual world. Yep. yep. Uh, so I think that they're misnaming this. This is no, I, this is I, like the daydream yeah. or the gear VR. This is yes, a VR exactly headset. And, uh, and if you, if you call them on this, which I've done, what they'll tell you is that it does bring forward this one innovation from the HoloLens, which is the, onboard positional tracking stuff and well, that's fascinating but i don't think that makes it mixed reality no that's yeah. a that's what other vive does that and that's a vr headset yeah. yep yeah. <clears throat> yep um i you know or i mean you could build it I know, in I, uh, to the headset that's what google there's, there's a rich there. history of misrepresenting the capabilities of this yeah, platform and I'm, it, i I'm find it alarming at every step you yeah, know i really do mm. wish they would um do the other thing is it's 2017, and so these things are going to appear at a cost of like $300 probably. Um, there was some notion of there being a like almost a gradient from the cheapest MR headset all the way up to the most expensive hall lens and that there would be these interim capabilities. And there aren't, not really. It's possible that a higher-end device with a higher-end PC might deliver um, a higher-resolution VR experience. Um, anyone who uses VR on a phone or elsewhere knows that your computer may be, or whatever it is, might be capable of 4K, but when you put the headset on, it's like a YouTube 320p video all of a sudden. Um, that's going to be an issue, uh, especially in the cheap ones. Um, I don't know. I, you know, unfortunately for Microsoft, when it comes to VR, the phone-based stuff is so inexpensive that if you want to experiment with it, that's the easiest way to do it, the cheapest way. And unfortunately for Microsoft, with things like Project Tango, speaking of ways in which Google kind of gets it, um, it's really cool to be able to walk around in the real world with your phone and be able to see augmented reality on the phone while you're interacting with things in the real world. And the kind of suddenly canonical example of this is when you go to a museum and maybe in front of you is a dinosaur or a skeleton and you hold up your phone to it and you see what the dinosaur would have looked like in real life. And that's really cool. You can't do that with HoloLens with, mm. unless you're locked in a room at NASA or somewhere, you know, where they have expensive equipment because HoloLens is not a consumer device. Mm. Hmm. So, I don't hmm. know. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Everyone depressed yet? Because I got no, more. No, I'm not depressed, but it's just, it's, <laughs> it's like, why, why do you call it what you call it? You should call it yeah. what it is. We also, yep. we also still don't know how much... It, I guess we have a ballpark on how much these are going to cost and when they're coming out, right? But we yeah. don't have exact details on that, do we? That's right. On, no, we don't. On any of these. Right. We keep seeing new headsets from different vendors. Like they showed off Dell um, and I think, who was the other one they showed off at Computex Asus that was new? or Acer. Asus. Acer? Yeah. Or one of the two. Um, they're cool so, looking. I mean, they're, they're nice. Yeah, they look nice, you know. It's but, you know, like, that's like saying the outside of your car is really attractive, but when you're sitting in it, you can't see it. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, I mean, the fact that it has like a nice looking design is cute, but you got to, you know, you're putting on a Batman cowl and you're not really going to see the thing, <laughs> you know? Hmm. Hmm, 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 yeah. hmm. I don't know. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, anything I should have bought instead of my nice uh, Lenovo? No, you got the right thing. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> Even if that's not true, please say that. <laughs> no, you did. I, that's the, I, I, I really like it. Like I said, I'm reviewing a ThinkPad X1 Carbon, and the thing I don't like about it is that it doesn't have touch. Touch is so nice. Um, it's funny because... You miss it when it's gone. Yeah, I don't use it all the time. It's just one more way of interacting. I often will scroll, and if there's a big button, and I just I go, tap it. <laughs> it's little things like that. And so the size of the touch targets isn't really uh, all that important. Um, I got to find a good uh, virtual workspace uh, manager. I'm not really... The way it's done natively in windows is confusing to me but i you're talking about like the task view type stuff or yeah, virtual desktop? well i just want to have multiple desktops i'm used to that in all my operating systems and an easy way to go back and forth and I'll so the thing you should maybe look up is the keyboard shortcuts for task view ah, um, because actually okay. once you kind of master that it's like anything else right uh, and they're probably trackpad gestures too, by the way. That's what that I'm will looking let you for. Yeah. Flip. Yeah. Look it up. Um, in fact, if you go into, I don't have one here, but if you go into settings 
and devices probably. Yeah, no, I know the pit. three. You can three fingers scroll up, three fingers. Yeah, but I bet down. they have like four finger swipes or something. Yeah, that that's what I. Oh, no, they do. Look at that. That's what you need yeah. to learn. That's yeah. what I. That's and you know what's funny? That's exactly like on a Mac. Yeah. Good. You just solved it. Thank you, Paul. You're so good. You <laughs> ought to write a book about it. I mean, <laughs> I should do a Windows podcast. <laughs> you should. You really got this down. <laughs> I'll write a book. That's a good idea. That's where the money is, Leo. That's where the money is. A field this guide. I'm going to go write a book. <laughs> Intel did announce new uh, X processors, extreme processors. Why? I don't know why they don't call them Xeons. Up to 18 core. Wow. And the funniest thing that I, I saw was Twitch streamers are going to love these. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because you're they're, doing they're, two of the highest end things right. you can do on a PC. They're playing at the same a game time. and encoding video yeah. in real time. It's a terrible thing to do on one PC. Uh, so you're, they're going to really appreciate these 18 cores. It's so funny. It cracks me up. Um, and then what's Coffee Lake? <laughs> it's the sequel to Cabby Lake, the current generation. Uh, and Coffee the thing Lake. that's kind of interesting about it is it's still 14 nanometers, right? They, um, we, we, we sort of talk about how it used to be TikTok and now it's TikTok. Talk, 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 talk. <laughs> you know, like, but um, actually, even though they haven't been able to go to 10 nanometers yet with this next generation, there's a 30% performance boost. And that's actually really significant. You know, with I think Skylake to Cabby Lake was 10 to 15%, probably depending on the workload. So they've figured out some way to make this one make a difference. Um, and so they didn't really say much about it at the show. They basically just said, yes, this is what we're doing. We already kind of knew it. Um, and we will talk more about it later in a year. And that used to be at IDF or whatever. And you may recall they're not doing IDF anymore. So uh, we'll, I don't know, they'll have a little webinar or something. But eventually, you know, over the summer, they'll talk about that more. Nice. Coffee Lake is a nice name. Makes me feel like yeah. a, and a lake of coffee. Better than Data Lake, am I right? Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. hey. I like lakes <laughs> and bridges. Guys, I'm just going to have to do this now. <laughs> oh, it works. <laughs> Jeez. By the way, Don't we should, insult the Data Lake. We should explain that uh, Paul sounds like he's in a man cave because he's in his man cave, <laughs> but everything else is left. Right. No, I should do the um, podcast for my storage container that's full of stuff. You should. <laughs> It probably have a really rich brown sound. Are nice. you doing that? Are you doing a, you one of those people that has a thing that they put on your curb and you just throw everything in there and the truck comes and takes it over to the new place? No, I'm one doing? of those people who rented a storage facility somewhere and I drive back and forth like oh, an idiot. Oh, Lord. My jet clamp it truck. <laughs> and I'm seriously. Grandma you know, on the back in a rocking chair. <laughs> yeah, it's like seriously, like life is about becoming everything that you hate. Yes. It and is. And being confronted by <laughs> I'll never be like my father. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I'll never be like that. It's like, I think I have, I think I've done a pretty good job of minimizing stuff and whatever. <laughs> and then, no, no, that, that's a lie. No, I have too much cracks stuff. cracks me up. It just cracks me up. <laughs> stuff. Get rid of it. This is your opportunity. We, we, we haven't mentioned this, but Paul, I guess, is <laughs> it's a kind of a shock moving to Pennsylvania. <laughs> yep. Uh, witness protection program, and I'm, I'm really, <laughs> he's going to grow a big bushy beard like David I, Letterman. You know, and, I, I want to go to one of the mill towns. I hear that manufacturing is going to be a big coming thing back. again. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they like um, the Jed Clampett look there. And uh, those yeah, that's right. The, uh, the Amish uh, yeah, yeah. buggy. Yeah, a little buggy. Thing. Actually, that's a great idea. Really good soft pretzels in Pennsylvania. Really <laughs> the Amish feel about always connected PCs. Why are you, Mr. Andy Carb, moving to the land of beer and pretzels? <laughs> I well, I figured if I could go to Germany and not have beer or pretzels, I could probably I do know. it anywhere. Okay. I am told that you're a mere 45 miles away from the King of Prussia Microsoft store, so that's good. <laughs> nice. So if I need to get my Surface Book serviced. <laughs> I'm going to King of Prussia. I'll be back in a week. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm looking forward to exploring some of this area. Oh, it's you know, beautiful. We don't it really know a lot gorgeous. about it. You're going to love it. Fa you You're going to be closer there. to New York. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be closer to New York, right? Yeah, how far? Yeah, there's a lot of good things about it. No, that's it's a very closer. good thing. How far is the drive to New York? I think it's just under two hours. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, I mean, it's, I would have, you know, without looking at a map, I would have assumed Pennsylvania to New York, Boston to New York would be pretty similar, but actually it's oh, closer. Yeah, it's much closer. Yeah, yeah, it's so funny. I don't know what it is. You feel like New England, everything's nearby, but everything's a really long drive. <laughs> <clears throat> Tell me about it. 
My when we went to, <laughs> it's we not a flat drive. No, we went. Yeah. We were visiting my mom in uh, in Rhode Island, and uh, Michael wanted to go to Maine. Sure. How, said, how, how hard? How could hard it could be? that be? We're all. It's in New England, right? <laughs> I'm not going to Maine. <laughs> so if there's no traffic from my house, you can hit the border of Maine in about an hour. Yeah, because you're north. But I live in um, New England, so there's never no traffic. Right. And well, that's the way it is. And in the, the, world the tip now. of Maine is not where you want to go in Maine. You want to go to someplace right. cool, like right. you know, uh, Portland or whatever, a gun quit or something. Yep. They're a little further away. Paul's moving to Emetic, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Emmaus. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was trying to provide you with cover in case you didn't want anybody yep. to know. No, no, I, I'm not trying to hide it. I mean, I... How many acres? I just... How many acres? <laughs> you got up to half, <laughs> half an acre. Half, half an acre? acre. <laughs> how are you going to grow... Uh, what is it? Corn. Name? Corn. <laughs> There are many fields of corn there where this house is. That's for According sure. to Bing Maps, it's an hour 48 from Emmaus to Manhattan. Yeah. If there's there no traffic. Nice. <laughs> Which <laughs> if there's no there traffic. never is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was, I was really interested. So when I got the Lenovo, turned it on, the very first thing I get is a Intel management engine update. The, you know, that, that oh, yeah. horrific bug that Intel basically puts, because this is a vPro, you know, it has the... Mm -hmm. uh, ME in it, and uh, that horrific bug that let anybody log into your computer over the network <laughs> and uh, become root. And uh, so that was fixed. And then very shortly after that, I got the creator's update, like a day later. So oh, nice. that was pleased. Uh, did not come with a creator's update, but, you know, that makes yeah. sense. Have you gotten on your HP Spectre, uh, Mary Jo, have you gotten the creator's update yet? Um, so... Amusingly, it tried to start downloading at Build when I was in Seattle, okay. oh, so nice. I stopped yeah. it. And then it kept trying to download when I was in Japan, oh, Lord, but no. I also stopped it yeah. because my connection wasn't the best. Oh. So uh, I don't have it yet, but it's trying to get on my machine. It's just trying and trying. <laughs> it's trying. It's, I was surprised. It's kind of a big deal. Like the screen goes yeah. you know, dark and it says we have a new version of Windows for yeah. you. I mean, they make a big deal. Sure. Uh, Deal about you have it. to make your privacy setting changes before anything can right. happen. Like that's the first thing that has that, to happen before. Is that it for the EU it. or is that just because Microsoft's tired of people bitching? Mm. Yep. Probably both. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, both of both those things. things. Stop complaining. <laughs> I just I said do whatever you want, Microsoft. I don't mind. I said just, you know, express mm. settings all the way. I don't want to go mm -hmm. through all that stuff. That's crazy. I, look, I mean, this is how things get slipped in, but I, I spent a lot of time investigating express settings in the previous versions of Windows 10. I spent a lot of time looking at these privacy settings, and I've come away with the same conclusion, which is I, they can just collect what they want to collect. I don't care. I don't care about any I of it. I don't like care. I don't care. None of it seems important to me. No. I, I, yep. Yep. I don't know. And another thing. <laughs> um Oh, I forgot what it was. Oh, I, uh, I said, show me ads. I'll, I'll take all the ads you got, but I haven't show got Show me ads. I said, show literally, ads. I want more ads. More ads. No, I don't see, I'm not seeing any ads in the, uh, in the, yeah. at all. Yeah. Actually, you know what hasn't happened since they shipped this thing, unless I'm missing something, is those File Explorer ads have kind of backed yeah. off, right? Yeah, they must have heard um, you. Remember that was kind of a little kerfuffle there for yeah. a month or so? And then Creators Updates yeah, they, out in the world. They heard you. They listened to you, They heard you, you and other people complaining yeah. and... They're kind of putting that on a back burner, and I think it's not going to go away, but they're going to sure. try to let that... Just wait till Thoratz is sleeping and bang! <laughs> yeah, I think I think they know that they were kind of pushing the boundary there, and now they're Actually, stepping back they a bit. they did ask me when I was doing my home swap this summer. I wonder if that's related. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, oh, and I forgot to mention, uh, did you mention, maybe you already did, that uh, Thunderbolt 3 will be... Now in no, the chipsets. I, I think this is huge because I've been kind of pushing this USB C slash Thunderbolt three thing for it. a while. Yep. And really pushing hard on Microsoft, just being totally tone deaf on this topic. And um and how easy it would have been just to add the port to the existing devices, yeah. you know, just simple. Um well, guess what, Microsoft? You're gonna have to adopt it soon because you're not gonna not get it. It's gonna be on the chipsets you have to use in those devices. So wow. Um, they can push back all they want, but eventually it's going to have to just happen. So the Thunderbolt 3 is just a net win for everybody. I love it. You know, dramatically not, better not bandwidth. Not a lot of Thunderbolt 3 uh, hard drives out there, but I have a few. No. I have an array. 
Um, now, this supposedly supports Thunderbolt 3, this Lenovo. So yep. why, So that's a uh, custom something that Lenovo's doing? Or? Yeah, everyone, uh, yeah, all the PC makers have Let's a way of doing do this. Thing. Lenovo has uh, technology built in to prevent that issue that HP was worried about, which is that you plug in a non- Right. standard part and it fries the motherboard or something. Right. They, they figured out how to prevent that from happening. Imagine that, a hardware maker solving a hardware problem. <laughs> um, what? I know, it's crazy. I, I mean, we've been doing this for 20 years and we know how to do stuff. Let's just do it. Yeah, um, yeah I haven't found yeah, any, so, any reason not to love this thing, I have to say. I know, I know. Well, um, this will also enable this technology in much smaller devices too, right? Or in a smaller space. And so a device like that that comes out a year or two from now, uh, that stuff will be built onto the chipset, and you won't need the supporting right. chipset that right. makes it happen today. You can use that right. space for battery or right. something else. You know, yeah. so it's it's, yeah. it's it's such a win. Uh, there was a Thunderbolt uh, three GPU dock at Computex, says Keith five twelve. So that's another thing you can do. There's so that's much the bandwidth, thing. Uh, right? Yeah. Uh, external dedicated GPU capabilities for laptops or desktops. Right? You could. Buy a gaming laptop that has whether whatever GPU built into it. You could plug in a uh, a GPU to the outside and, and have a better one. Beautiful. Someone should tell Microsoft this exists. <laughs> it's so nice. <laughs> I just look forward to the day when I don't have to have four different kinds of USB port. You know, things. Yeah. I mean, I've got Type A. I've got t a micro USB. I've got. I still have some mini USB. My toothbrush is mini USB. Uh, like what? That's, some, that's awesome. <laughs> well, the older stuff, right? But most, but all the phones now, pretty much, except for Apple, uh, are Type C. Yep. Um, so it's get, it's starting to feel a little more Great. uniform, and it's non proprietary. I know. You know it drives me crazy that I have to buy a special ninety dollar charger yeah. for yeah. a laptop. I don't have to do it for this one. I have. I, I will admit, I have been. Uh, screwed over kind of by the dongle thing once now. And I, it was a nice comeuppance because I had just had a discussion, I think with Brad on a podcast where we were talking about this and how this has never happened and all these people complain and it's really not a big deal and blah, 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 whatever. And hung up the phone, hot, grabbed a box. I was shipping via UPS or whatever, ran out to the car, asked my wife if I could use her car because she has, uh oh, you know, Bluetooth in it. And I wanted to listen to music or whatever, or audiobook actually through the, Stereo system. So my phone, I spent, I sat in the car for about 20 minutes trying to figure this out. My phone connected with Bluetooth, no problem, but it wouldn't play audio over it. I could make phone calls and whatever, but I couldn't do music or audiobooks. So I said, well, that's okay. It has a cable. And I plugged the, I went to plug the cable in and of course it's the iPhone. So I don't have the dongle and I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> I, I, I literally dongle. just explained how this has never happened. To never me. happens. <laughs> yep. The dongle. Well, I have, Every div every cable possible in every p possible crevice yes, of my right. life. I do this. I, I, we're all compulsive. Yeah. This is my this is my wife's car, right? So if this was my car, this adapt there would be an adapter in there always, right. just for this reason. Right. Um, if any, if I meet anybody in Peru that needs a a, a, a mini USB <laughs> cable, I'll be ready. It's like in the seventies, people used to bum a cigarette off you, know, yeah. and now they're bumming a yeah. USB C. Yeah. You got a battery, my kid. Every time I see my my son Henry, he says, "Bring a pow bring a battery." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is about kids. I don't know, but they don't charge their stuff overnight. Mm -hmm. They just they charge it when it needs to be charged, which is often like a, not an yep. a, a opportune moment. They charge in the middle of the day or whatever. So he says, "Bring a battery and a cable." Kids are classic like that. Like when you actually need them to do something. They're like, oh, my battery's dead. Yep. Like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> yep. We've been sitting at home for 17 charge hours. Charge it every <laughs> night. <laughs> Just yeah. plug it in. It's not that hard. Yep. Uh, ba -ba oh, this is weird. Speaking of Brad. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there he is. Where is he? Speaking there of Brad, is. this is really weird. Microsoft is considering a Windows Mobile reboot. Somebody yes. was somebody. Uh, well, Mary Jo seems is he being to punk? know something about this. I, I I think this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard, but maybe you can prove yeah. otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, there have been rumors about something codenamed Andro Andromeda from Microsoft for I guess the past six months or so. And originally, when these rumors came out. I think uh, people thought this was some kind of a Windows desktop environment, but 
I and another person named uh, Kasim, who we've talked about mm-hmm. on the podcast before, Kasim Kelty, ha- uh, both think that what Brad is hearing about is Andromeda, but Andromeda in hardware form. Oh. So think about this. Microsoft has not said they're getting out of mobile, right? They said they were getting out of consumer smartphones, and yep. they that's why they wrote off all the Nokia assets and sold off all the manufacturing plants and fired all the people who worked for Nokia. They realized they missed the boat on consumer smartphones. But Satya Nadella and others at the company keep saying that doesn't mean we're getting completely out of mobile. We still think we could come into the mobile space, but not competing head to head with Android and iPhone. So what does that mean? We've yeah, thought for that? a while... It means some kind of a mobile device that has telephony capabilities aimed at the business market primarily. That's what I think Andromeda is. That's what I think Brad's hearing about and what's been circulating out there. Some kind of a mini tablet type device that will be able to provide telephony. And um, I think Hmm. this is something that's still quite a ways away. I would guess 2018 or beyond. Not, it's not something we're going to see this year. It's not Surface Phone 2 like people have been talking about it. It's more <laughs> like a mobile yeah. tablet, small small form tablet with a stylus. Um, it's probably a member of the Surface family when it finally ships that yeah. will support telephony. That's all I think we're hearing. I don't think it's anything new. I just think okay. um, people are starting to hear about Microsoft testing this. It's not so- Microsoft coming back into phones. Okay. No. But in other words, this is an offshoot of Windows Mobile, not full Windows 10 on ARM or whatever. Is that jive um, with what? So um, the thing that we call Windows Mobile today, the operating system, it's kind of at an end of life point, right? Like mm-hmm. Microsoft is continuing to put builds out of it, uh, out of this operating system. But there, it's that thing that's called Feature 2. You notice they don't call it um, Redstone yeah. 3. So I think they're going to continue that up to a point, support the existing phones with that build. But I don't think they're going to have a Redstone 3 that's in the Windows mobile family. So I think I think what they'll do is have an operating system for this thing that may or may not be Windows 10 on ARM. It may just be Windows mobile kind of retrofitted with the thing that you've heard about, too, that's called Seashell. Have you heard about Seashell? Composable shell. So Composable Shell is a modular version of the shell. So it does all the things like start and task switching and um, Windows management, settings, all that kind of thing in a way that will make it easier for Microsoft to bring that environment in a common way across all the different form factors it has. I think that is kind of what Brad's, again, what Brad and others have heard about um, being where mobile's going next. I don't think it's like Windows Mobile uh, as it exists today. I think it's Windows Mobile in some other form. So where is mobile? I mean, what? if if they they mean a tablet, do they mean, what do they mean? I think a tablet. I do. I I think think it's going to be, yeah, a tablet. Is it like a full Windows 10 tablet that runs Windows 10 apps? Is it a embedded device that's for a specific set of, you know, features or whatever? A Um, Skype? thing in the hardware based based on like patents that people have been reporting on you know with the mm-hmm. different hinges and stuff over the past couple months my think my guess is it's like courier 2 right it's some kind of a foldable tablet that uses a stylus that has telephony capabilities that's what i think that's where i think microsoft is going with mobile devices i don't understand why anyone would buy such a product when there are iPads in the world and Surface devices. Um, there will be Surface devices, I'm sure, this year that are always connected PCs, for example. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't get it. I guess, yeah, I, I, I can't defend what the value proposition of this is because I haven't really seen it. But I, um, I think the, the thinking is there isn't a small form factor Surface. Right. True. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and I think Microsoft wants to show the way with something like this so that OEMs will copy it going forward. 
Um, okay. And what makes me think this is right that we're hearing these kind of pulling all these rumors together is Microsoft's change in positioning about Surface Pro. Remember how they stopped calling it the tablet yeah. that can replace your laptop? Why did they do that? My thinking is because they're building a tablet. So now they're calling Surface Pro a laptop, but they don't have a thing that's called a tablet. So this right. is more like Surface Mini than it is right. Surface Phone, although exactly. we have telephony yep. capabilities. Right. Again, all this is me and others uh, like Casim and other people. Neo Wen's done some stuff on it, like all trying to pull mm -hmm. together the different pieces of rumors we're hearing. So I can't say this is what they're doing, but I think this is what they're doing. I love the courier idea. I know a lot of people wanted them to come out with courier, right? Yeah, but you know, a, a courier in isolation isn't very useful, right? It has to right. have things that make it work and it has to meet yeah. certain needs that other products aren't yes. meeting. And, you know, a courier that was an iPad would be instantly useful, right? And yep. would have a market. Yep. Um, right. It has to have a value proposition. It has to be business focused, I think. Yeah. It, it probably will have a stylus. It will be touch, right? right? It'll be all the things... A premium device like Surface, it'll fit in with the value proposition that Microsoft has established around Surface. But you, you have to ask yourself, like, so what is it going to do that other tablets don't do besides just being foldable, right? Like, that's one interesting thing. I, I, look, I mean, if, if this thing doesn't ship until next year, if, if ever, yeah. the, the big thing that's going to change for Surface by that point, I believe, is that this Surface laptop, which is just a laptop, it's a pretty traditional <laughs> laptop, is going to be their best-selling Surface device, right? It's going to, I think, I, that's my opinion, but I mean, I, I think yeah. this thing, this thing is that is, in, that is in no way innovative, really, from sort of a form factor perspective, is a great, I mean, it's beautiful. I love, I, I'm really interested in it. What about the it. fuzzy keyboard? I like the fuzzy keyboard. I'm just saying it's a laptop. In fact, the reason I like it <laughs> I is know. because it's a laptop. I think that's the reason yeah. most people are going to like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I, I sort of, I, I sort of view this through this lens of there's an element of Microsoft and there's certainly an element of Microsoft's fan base who can't get past the, we're not the platform maker thing anymore. I know. Right. And it, it just seems like a vain desire to set a standard where none is required or wanted, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I, look, I, I, I'm happy to be wrong about this, but I, I, I just think this. This is like digging up Jason Voorhees again. Like, how many times are we going to dredge this up? Like, stop. You know? Okay, I, I would suggest that you go and look at numerama.com. Yeah. That's Kasim Ketfi's yeah, blog. Yeah, no, I see the, the link to it, yeah. Um, it's in French. You'll have to use a translation program to read it, most mm -hmm. likely. I'll probably be the um, Google <laughs> <one>. yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, but he, he kind of lays out what I think is – the case and where, where they're going to go with this. Incroyable project. It, it is incroyable. I agree with that. Le smartphone. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think this, I think that Microsoft has to come in with a mobile play. I think they can't just totally capitulate and say, you know what? Our play now is to support iPhone and Android. I, I don't think that's good enough just for the very reasons what we talked about on this show at the beginning, which is you need a mobile portable device. That's something in hand that people carry around with them all the time to get things established like Cortana and Translate and Maps, right? If you don't have that, you're you're missing out well, on a big yeah, segment. We were just talking about that, right? You're not getting right. signals. Right. So I think they, they're trying to find a way to kind of wedge themselves back into the game with something unique, something that has a differentiation um, value proposition, I don't know if this will be the right thing or the thing that ultimately comes to market, but I think they're kind of looking around for like, how can we get in there with something that's not a consumer smartphone? It also may be that it's just prudent for a company to do research on new form factors. You miss the smartphone. Yeah. You don't want to yeah. miss whatever's next. And right. maybe the smartphone isn't the end of the pocket computer. I mean, that's kind of what... My, my right. French isn't very good, but that's kind of what he's talking about here at Numerama, mm -hmm. is that maybe there is a device that's going to be as popular as a smartphone, mm. but more capable. I don't know. I mean, the smartphone's yeah. success isn't as a phone. It's right. as a camera and a pocket computer. 
yeah. you know, an always connected pocket computer. Well, maybe that's not the end of it. Maybe there's more something. I'm sure every company is doing research along these lines. Yeah. I'm sure Apple has a bunch of prototypes for something. The, the problem yeah. is Microsoft has sort of taken a baby step in this direction with Continuum and with that HP Elite X3. And if you were to go back a year when they first started marketing this thing, you know, they don't talk about it like it's a phone. They talk about it like it's a three-in-one computer, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and it is a way what they've done with, with Windows, with Windows 8 and 10. Yeah, uh, yeah. right. And and I think the, the Continuum capabilities on the PC make – Tons of sense for those types of devices. In fact, the X1 Yoga you have will do that, right? When you flip it back over, it could yeah. go into tablet it's mode. Mo and that's it's kind of one of those. It, I never, I really never detached the Surface Book screen. Yeah. So no, it's, but it's it's kind of this it, it's mix there. that's there. And I I, I yeah. can imagine, although I have no experience yet, using it in a tent mode and a tablet mode. Yep. But if you flip it all the way down, like if you make it like a tablet. Unless you've changed something or if they configured it differently, you should be prompted to see if you in, want to go into tablet yeah, mode. Yeah, yeah, I can go into tablet mode. I'd actually turn that that's prompt fine. off. That's fine. You know, and, and the thing with the phone, like Dex with the Samsung phones or the Continuum stuff for Microsoft, is one of those things that makes for a good demo. It sounds like a good idea, but you're not getting the PC apps on, you know, so you get this thing that kind of looks like a PC. Microsoft has a bad history with things that look like Windows but aren't Windows, you know, mm. and, um, on the phone, it just doesn't. It just doesn't do it. Well, there are lots of question marks. I mean, I right. think it's safe to say that the uh, the tablet is kind of a flop form factor. iPad yeah. sales are down. Nobody's really. I don't think anybody's making great hay with a tablet. We know that a phone that we've kind of reached optimal phone size, which is something slightly less than six inches. That if it's too big, you can't carry it. So yeah. I. I mean, I understand, and this is what. Uh, they're talking about on Numerama is this idea of a kind of a mm -hmm. folio, mm -hmm. sure. is a, a hybrid between a smartphone and a tablet. That's kind of yeah. it sounds like a you know a student device almost. You could imagine, mm -hmm. but I think Microsoft's been there, been there, done that, right? Because well, yeah, they have. They, they, <laughs> uh, do you mean with Courier? Because no, I mean with Surface Pro. I oh. mean, that's really that's except what except the size, right? Yeah, but what so, size would make this? I mean. Is it like a wallet? <laughs> I'm guessing like what? six inch, like small, like or, when it's or, folded up small. Right. Well, that may be because, I mean, there has been a yeah. drive to make these thinner and thinner. But if you yeah. couldn't, and new, and there's new screen technologies coming out and yeah. stuff. And maybe you make a, you know, put a foldable, foldable OLED screen that is, you yep. know, this size and then opens right? up if you want something a little larger. I mean, th I, I'm sure that's where they're thinking. Yeah. It's just so yeah, limited. And the path I, I, the you know, patents show these big. hinges. I know. <laughs> How do you type I know. On this it's thing? limited. It is limited. Yeah. I mean, maybe you don't type on it. Maybe it's something you yeah. use a stylus with. And Does anybody sure. still carry a Filofax or a date book? Or a, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> people I, do. <laughs> I used to carry the Franklin Planner. Yeah, and I had sure. all different, there was like big ones. And then I finally got a yeah. little one, but it was really yep. thick. <laughs> These yep. are the form factors that don't make sense to today's youth. Yeah, they <laughs> you know? go, what do you right. carry that thing for? Yeah. yeah. And what if you lose yeah. it? Where's your backup? Right. Yeah, and how do you sure. get on the internet with it? Yeah. I mean, maybe that's where Continuum plays, right? Is you you this is you use it to read and consume content and then when you hook it up to Continuum, that's how you actually compose. I don't know. I do have I, to I have to say that the, my favorite pocket computer of all time. Mm -hmm. Paul will be old enough to remember this. The Scion. 3A. I knew you were going to say Scion. <laughs> that was my father still talks about this device. <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> I remember he showed us this oh, at so his old. condo, and I want to say it was the late '80s, but at the very early, latest, it was the early '90s, and mm -hmm. I was actually pretty impressed with it. At the it time. was so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's about the size of a glasses case. It's a little bigger. Yep. Screen isn't that big. But imagine this with modern materials. That keyboard was usable. You thumb typed, but it was usable. And look, it's a regular keyboard. It's got, you know, enter key and shift right. keys. Um, it, it had built-in apps. Now, nowadays, we could put much more processing in it. You know what killed this? It remember, wasn't Windows CE. No. I remember talking. <laughs> I actually had lunch with the, uh, the the CEO of the company, I remember, many years ago. And okay. I said, why don't you, this would be really great if it synced up with my computer. Yeah. And, and he was said, no, nobody, 
Yeah. Well, this is pre-Palm, right? He no, said, I know, but was, I mean, so who did it? Who, Palm, who, the Palm kill? Pilot. Palm. Put this yeah. guy out of the business. He said, oh, nobody yeah. wants that. That's the classic, mm. nobody wants that. Yeah. We've done research. Nobody wants that. That's what and, Microsoft <laughs> says about USB-C and Thunderbolt. Right, right, right. It's the classic response. Oh, nobody wants that. So, uh, yeah, it was shortly after my lunch with him that Palm comes along with the pilot. And what does it do? You put it in a dock. By yeah. the way, I've talked uh, later with Jeff Hawkins, the founder of Palm. He said, you don't really need that button. You know that button you push on it? Yeah. 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 It that was a dummy was button. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> but people wanted some sense of, I'm starting the sync now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it would go, and then, and it's and it sunk, it sunk, sank fast, <laughs> and it got everything off your computer onto your device. Yeah. I owned at least twenty Palm devices, easily. But it had a problem because they didn't want to put a keyboard on that, right? So you had to use that graffiti yeah. and a weird, mm -hmm. yeah, alphabet yeah, but pen. You know, Palm is a good example of a company that at least learned from its mistakes because when BlackBerry popularized that keyboard, they. You know, they they went there eventually. It yeah. was kind of too late, I guess, by that point. But they they eventually went there. I guess my only point is that it's really common. We sit here and we think, oh, it's the it's the end of times. History's over. Uh, everybody, <laughs> this is it. This right. is as good as this is slab, your, your yeah, fondle yeah, slab. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Yeah. That's the perfect form factor. And Microsoft can't sit still and say, oh yeah, and we missed that one. They've yeah. got to think, well, what's going to be next? And I yeah. think it, this this is a reasonable. Attempt. I mean, it, you've got to think about what modern technologies, miniaturization, better screens, mm -hmm. could do to make this bring back maybe this some sort of scion-like form factor. Maybe I don't yeah. know. I, the the problem that they have though is the problem they always have, which is that they don't have the thing that gets you to the next thing. You know, in other words, if you're Apple, you have yeah. the iPhone. They, they this is the most popular mobile device in the world, and they haven't been able to sell very many of these other things that kind of build off of it. Um, you know, a smartphone. Uh, the smartphone guys are all doing like AI and the, the digital assistants and smartwatches mm -hmm. and blah blah blah. Like, but at least they have this huge audience of people built in that, that they can sell something to, so right. they can take them to the next step. Microsoft has it with the cloud because their most important customer base, the enterprise, is on all these on-prem systems, and Microsoft has the thing. They they have that base and now they can move them to the next thing. But they don't have it on the devices side and they don't really right. have it on the client side, not in a, kind of a volume sense. Should they give up on hardware and go back to... Yes. <laughs> yeah. Cloud I, I think this is literally short-term treading water. They're going to have multiple defeats and they'll finally figure it out. I think it's inevitable. It's not because they don't make good stuff. It's not because they don't have smart people. It's because... This is just the way it is. I don't, they don't have a way to convince people. Imagine if you could somehow convince your enterprise customers to buy a hardware device. Maybe then you could make something. I'm sure this is why they're targeting businesses with it. It's their only hope for this stupid thing. Well, I think, I think with Surface Pro and the hub and the book, the audience is the business audience, right? I think mm -hmm. what you're, what you're talking about is they, they have they have a lot of power to convince the business user to go with their hardware, I think. But consumers are the doubters, and understandably so, because everything Microsoft's done in the consumer space, they've either but, undone or screwed up, right? Like the band, um, all the things the around. The consumer space Nokia. has screwed this for them, right? Yeah, that's where they're hurting. We have BYOD, and we yeah. have a user base demanding Apple and Google yeah. devices. Um, in business, and it's just it's a tsunami. They can't they can't do anything about it. IDC yeah. said this past quarter that the only reason that business sales of PCs grew was because of Chromebooks. Yeah, I mean that that's crazy, yeah. but that's you know this is yeah. the the drumbeat yeah. that's happening all around them. They can't stop yeah. it. Right. I don't think they're going to get out of hardware though. <laughs> well. Um, Okay. I mean, uh, I, I think that they are, but I think it's not going to happen next year. I mean, yeah. you know, they just design hardware that goes in cloud-based data centers. So there's yeah. some hardware, I guess. They could, you right. know, you could make this argument that their expertise in designing special chipsets for the Surface, like the Surface yeah. Pro has a, a unique right. uh, hardware acceleration chip for Windows Inc., which is actually kind of incredible. Um, they could apply that same computer science to 
you know, something that will make their cloud data yes. centers more efficient, blah, 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 whatever. I think they already have actually. But um, I, I mean, so Microsoft selling hardware to end users, I think that does go away. I think mm. that's inevitable. Really? I, I yeah. don't see that going away anytime in the foreseeable future. Yeah. I feel like they're staffing up the Surface unit like crazy. Well, sales were down last quarter, right? But it's still only well, only they, because yeah, yeah they they, they didn't ship when they were supposed to. But um, yeah. I I think they I don't think they they will ever make Surface a huge business like over right. a couple billion. But I don't think they'll get out of it. It serves a it serves a role. I kind of think it does. It, it demonstrates it does, to OEMs. They just released a laptop. Yeah. <laughs> you know, remember. I know. The big yeah. story about Surface was always that we're defining new markets. And you could make a case for all of their devices up until that one that they were defining new markets. They just took, like you, you just mentioned this, they took their device that defined yeah. this new market, uh, formalized it, right, for two-in-ones, and they now they're calling it a laptop. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it sounds like a weird capitulation yeah. to reality. Yeah, to I, think, I think the reason they they believe that the surface laptop is still making a category is because they want to show people that you could run something like windows 10 S on a high end device. And they want OEMs to copy that idea that, you know, the idea that you could run store apps only um, on a device and make a business out of it. I think that's where they see it as category defining, not, not because it's a laptop, but more because it's yeah. a high end laptop running a different kind of, version of the operating system, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, so there is an argument that Microsoft might be looking at this, you know, something new and different. Something, and, yeah. And it could just way, be I, as a reference platform for OEMs. I mean, I think that's what they're doing with these mixed It may also never headsets. happen. And it <laughs> right. may never happen. Right. Right. It could just right. be that's so right. early. Yep. doesn't yep. mean anything. You know, we, right. you know right. those of us who cover Apple... <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. are already used to this you know whole idea of well look at all the things apple patents surely yeah. they're making a keyboard yeah. that uh, can mm -hmm. float in thin air but you know just a patent yeah. uh da, 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 da. let's see i don't want to go right to pics yet oh is there uh is there any um Xbox news of any kind? Anything, anything at all, Paul? <laughs> yeah, in, a, in a really unexpected... Actually, I should mention up front, too, It's uh, maybe this is a tip, but it's the last day of May, so now is chances now are is by the time. time you hear this, it's over. But remember that this is your last day to get two of those uh, games with gold games from uh, this past month. It's a good haul. And if you're hearing it on June 1st, there are new games to enjoy. Something exciting. Um but yes, so in a very unexpected move, uh, timed, I think, to Mary Jo's trip to Japan, uh, <laughs> Microsoft announced that they were renaming Beam, that Twitch-like video game broadcasting service that they purchased and are now integrating into Xbox, to Mixer. Ah. And they didn't really say it this way, but I, they seem to suggest in a blog post that the issue here is that it's it's available in all these international markets and they want to be able to market it everywhere in the world, obviously. And the problem is that, I guess, was that Beam, it might have been like, um, like what was that, uh, the Chevy car that had the terrible name in Spanish? Oh, no, Nova. Nova, Nova, Nova does Nova, not yeah. go, yeah. It might have been something like that, like Beam meant something in some you know language where it wasn't working out, whatever. But um, so they, they <clears throat> excuse me, so they renamed it, and that's fine. I, I, I don't see any big issue to that. Um, and they also added some new features um, to it as well. And I'm trying to find out what those are. Um, Co-streaming, which allows up to four people to do a split screen thing where they're in the same game and they're all streaming together. Previously, you had to go back and forth between different streams. I think that's probably the big one. Um, there's a mix of create beta for Android and iOS. So it's a new mobile app. And that's for self-broadcasting. Now, it doesn't support game broadcasting. So one of the weird things about Beam or Mixer now is that um, you can just broadcast anything as it turns out, right? And they don't actually stop this. In fact, I think it's encouraged. So in mm. some ways, this is like a live YouTube thing, right? It doesn't have to be a video game, although it mm. usually is. And I and I suppose, I don't un actually, no, I don't understand it. I'm not going to pretend I understand why anyone would want to do this. But I could imagine that someone who does live broadcast of gameplay would occasionally just broadcast them talking about something, right? That, that happens, maybe, yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm sure that's what happens, so. Um, 
For when Anywho. Twitch started, uh, it said only game streaming. Yeah, and then they loosen it up, and we're on Twitch. Sure. And while I think many people like to play a game called <laughs> Drink, if Paul says yes, yeah, know. actually we would be a natural for Mixer <laughs> yeah, or Twitch. Yeah, mixer, um, data lakes built, built for Mixer. Yeah, <laughs> if you say yeah. Uh, yeah, Hadoop, have a have a shot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, that was the big. That was that's the big, the big thing news. Big week. Xbox yeah. story. We actually had some fun earlier, and we'll show it on Saturday on the new screensavers. There's a new Star Trek virtual reality game uh, that you can play multiplayer, and uh, so we we set up four PlayStation Fours. It's not on Xbox. I'm sorry. PlayStation Four, uh, PlayStation VRs, and uh, Nate and Jason and Megan, and um, oh somebody else. We're playing, uh, all playing. They were on the, they thought they were wearing the visors. They, they were on the deck of the Enterprise. And Megan was a tactical officer. I don't know who the captain was. And then they were all playing this. It was so funny to watch. You got to see it on Saturday. We'll show it. But another reason why, and I'm sure Scorpio will have some sort of VR solution, right? It pro almost certainly will have the Windows Mixed Reality. Yeah, uh, that's what these are for. Yeah, yeah. I, I noticed an going. HDMI or something cable coming off of those headsets. There's, yeah, that's for plugging into your Xbox, I would guess. So, um, uh, don't be surprised if um, back of the book coming up in just a second. Don't be surprised, Paul and Mary Joe, if you get a little vial in the mail and we ask you to spit in it. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Because, uh, well... <laughs> Look, I'm not doing random drug testing. About this, uh, we just want to know a little more about you. Moving is stressful. I don't know why I have to explain this. I'm talking about 23 and me. It is, I, I've, I did it, I think, when they first came out years ago. One of the fun things about 23 and me is if, if you do, do, once you do do it, they're always giving you more information about what your DNA says about you 23 is the number of pairs of chromosomes that define your body who you are sometimes your personality and little weird things like hairy ears you can find out so much 75 all you have to do is spit in a vial send it back to them you'll get 75 online genetic reports categories like ancestry this is mine i'm sh i'm lifting my kimono to show you my dna Ancestry, wellness, traits, uh, and even health. Look, I love this one. Chromosome pair three. Your height may be influenced by a Neanderthal variant in the LPP gene. I have 265 Neanderthal variants, but that's fairly low. I'm in the bottom third of 23andMe customers. And I'm in seventh place among family and friends. And the reason they can talk about family and friends, and I love this report is because they will, they can talk about your relations, your your DNA family. Because so many people now have taken the 23andMe, uh, you know, genetic test, that I can figure out, you know, who's, a, I found a first cousin, a second cousin on 23andMe. It is so cool. That's the DNA relative finder that lets you uh, find and connect with new relatives. You can find out how DNA influences your traits, how it relates to things like caffeine consumption. I have 1,235 DNA relatives in my DNA family. Quite a few uh, close family to second cousins. Quite a few, many more distant cousins. Here's a map of my family members. This is so cool. You can find out, by the way, most of my family members live in Texas, Florida, California, Oregon, and Massachusetts, Paul. 30 relatives in Massachusetts. Pennsylvania, only 15 to 20, so don't move. There won't be as many me's there. No, none in Utah? <laughs> Actually, no, I didn't see any in Utah. It's kind of interesting where they aren't. Yeah, that's more, mm. that's more interesting, isn't it? Ancestry of my DNA relatives, mostly British and Irish, Italian. I have more, really, that's all? I thought I had more Italian. Uh, there's a little bit of Ashkenazi Jew in all of us. Six, okay, compared to the 23andMe customers, my DNA relatives are less likely to have skydived. 67% <laughs> less likely to sky. Uh, sky. This, are, this is just fun stuff that the, the da data can tell you. You can even get the raw download of your genetic data and start doing some of your own research as well. 
It is really, really cool. Easy to do. Like I said, you just spit in a vial. 23andMe's carrier status reports meet FDA requirements. So you can find out if you're a carrier for certain conditions like cystic fibrosis or hereditary uh, hearing loss, which I am. Here you go. 23andMe.com slash twit. Get over 75 genetic reports and start exploring your DNA today at 23andMe.com slash twit. I just, this is so cool. And I did it a long time ago, and I'm learning more about it all the time, and I love it. 23andMe.com slash twit. It would be a great gift for Father's Day. Do it yourself and then give it to your dad, because then you, the two combined give you more information. It's really cool. All right, time for Paul and the back of the book, your tip of the week, my friend. So starting tomorrow, June 1st, Microsoft is launching a subscription service called Xbox Game Pass, which Yay. brings over 100 Xbox One and Xbox 360 backward compatible games uh, to subscribers. You don't have to be an Xbox Live Gold subscriber. You, anyone can subscribe. It's $10 a month. Um, and a lot of people are referencing this as a Netflix for video games, which actually it's not. You know, the nice thing about Netflix is that you can jump in and out of videos in this case very quickly. They stream. Um, the Xbox service does not stream. You actually have to download these games to your hard drive. Oh. And there, there are advantages to this. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, but the issue is that some of these games are enormous. I cite two of them that are available on the list that I think are, one of them is 45-ish gigabytes. And the other one I think is 90-something gigabytes. Oh, that's weird. Um it so makes it a I, little hard to sample. I play the <laughs> yeah. NVIDIA. NVIDIA has one. NVIDIA Now, I think it's called. It's on my mm -hmm. shield. And that yep. really is streaming. Like, they, the game right. is on their end, and it's and yep. you're in, are interacting with a streaming server. So Microsoft's, that's... Is not streaming. Probably better quality. No. Definitely better quality. Uh, absolutely. There's yep. no doubt about it. There, there are advantages and disadvantages to both approaches. Um uh, PlayStation's <clears throat> now service is the same. It's streaming, right? So those things are more like Netflix, right? Um, Microsoft does do uh, it does have the capability to allow you to start playing a game while it's downloading. The problem is it varies according to game. Um, it's not very sophisticated. Most games don't give you a way to go in and say, well, I'm going to do multiplayer, do that one first. Um, in my experience, and I've tried this, you know, many times, I, I've, it's never been satisfying. You basically have to wait for the thing to finish. Um, but I'm not complaining. Don't get me wrong. I actually think this is a great service. It's it, it's inexpensive. Uh, the game library is only going to grow over time. Obviously, some games will come out as well. But if you want to buy a game that you've sampled this way or played this way, you don't have to sample it. Um, you get a, you could buy it at a discount if you're an Xbox uh, Game Pass subscriber. So. It's a nice, it's a nice system, but don't confuse it. Don't be confused by the Netflix thing. It's, it's actually not like Netflix. So if you download Witcher Three, mm -hmm. you just can continue to play it as long as you pay for this subscription. That's right. And and how much is it? No, uh, Nine ninety nine a month. Okay. So since a game yeah. is sixty bucks, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah, and and it just gives you a, It's nice because you can go out and say, well, I, 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 I might want to buy this game, but I don't know. Happens all the time. It, and, it actually yeah. solves a problem because it's really yeah. hard to tell how 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 good or bad a game's going to be. Yeah. Until you play the, it. The, the way it is like Netflix is that the problem is it's some weird subset of what's out in the world. Right. So right. the games that are on there may or may not be of interest to you. Can you still uh, rent? Go to GameStop and rent games. <laughs> um, I haven't been in a GameStop in a while, although I know I think this one's still in Dedham. Um, uh, of course there is. We have one. And you know why they live? Because uh, Electronic Arts and all the game companies really like the lines and the, f yeah. and the furor on game release day. I, don't, I think it's a marketing sure. tool. Because who, sure. seriously, <laughs> don't you download all your games now? Who goes to the store to buy right. a game? I guess somebody wouldn't have a lot of database. We stop. I mean, Mark and I used to do that, right? For Call of Duty, We'd, I'd wake yeah. him up at midnight. And, yeah. Um, now he's old enough that when midnight comes, he is actually still out, and he's he pre, can drive his own car. He's pre-purchased the game, and he's playing it. Yeah, he's already, right. Yeah. It's already downloaded to his yeah. hard drive because, yeah. <laughs> so, Things are different now. Yeah, times have changed. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, have you told him yet that you're moving to idea. Pennsylvania, as, uh, or are you just going to leave without telling him? <laughs> Actually, uh, you know, Mary Jo referenced how fast this happened, and that's true. And we were, we had literally 
gone from maybe we'll move it sometime to, you know, to full blown. We are literally moving. And it was a week into it. And Stephanie, my wife said, hey, we should probably tell Mark. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, but it's better for him too because he goes to school in Rochester, New York, and actually the drive for him to Pennsylvania is less uh, than the drive here, so it will benefit him ultimately. So the chat room is saying that uh, that you can't. The GameFly is still around. I I used to be a member of this. This is this was oh, interesting. like the Netflix DVD subscription, mm -hmm. right? You could get uh, tour games at a time or something like that. Uh, these th these kind of things are actually a good uh, a good idea, regardless of how they do it, because you know, you spend 60 bucks on a game and you don't like it, uh, you know, you kind of screwed. I mean, Microsoft, there is a way to do it. You can actually, if you haven't played for so long or whatever, they'll let you, you know, send it back and everything. But Oh, I should um, find out about that because I can't tell you how many games I've only played 15 minutes. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. So in this case, though, you might be down, you might want to download a few overnight. The other issue with the downloading thing, too, is that most Xbox hard drives are 500 gigabytes and um, those things fill up really quick. In fact, the reason I, well, not the reason, but one of the reasons I bought the launch version of the Xbox One S is that it comes with a two gig, two terabyte internal drive. And uh, you can really kind of load that thing up with games. It's kind of nice. I know you can add a drive, but just having a single, you know, the single device. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and then uh, just as kind of a bonus tip, uh, Xamarin University is doing a weekly uh, course. So they're going to do one course a week for four, or I guess it might be five weeks, four or five weeks in June. And uh, they're doing it live. It's free. Anyone can do oh, it. Neat. You can see what the schedule is. And, and knowing how these things always go, this will be made available for streaming, I'm sure, after the fact. But uh, it starts actually tomorrow, June 1st, which is a Thursday. Yep. So every Thursday throughout June, which is, there's actually five Thursdays in June, um, they'll have a different uh, session or course or however you want to think of it. Oh, um, so you to just learn. Want, it's just like a one day taste. Yeah. What yep. a good idea though. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Yeah. So that's cool. And then uh, for app picks, uh, Microsoft released the Microsoft Planner companion app on Android and iOS today. Um, it's really kind of basic at this point. Uh, Microsoft Planner is a new, it's basically the new task, you know, for tasks uh, for Office 365. Um, you can't actually create a task <laughs> using this app. It's uh, literally a companion app, so you can just go view tasks and do some basic things, but they are going to add that capability over time. And so they're not calling this a beta, but it's obviously not fully fe featured yet, but it is available today. And on Xbox One in like general availability form and on Windows 10 and beta form, you can get the SoundCloud app uh, today. And on Xbox One, it supports background playback, meaning oh. that you can queue up a soundtrack and then get into a game and your music will continue oh, playing. Oh, I like that. Yeah. The kids love SoundCloud. Yeah, it's, it's a, a quirky service that I don't know a lot. I had, literally had to look it up on Wikipedia. It's kind of interesting. Um, I have a the genesis of this thing is really interesting. Yeah, it's it was started as MySpace, and now it's um, a lot more than that. I actually, did, I did not know that. Yeah, a lot yeah. of bands put their uh, music up on SoundCloud. A yep. lot of remixes up there. I've put podcasts I should, I up there. By the way, since you didn't, I, I didn't mean literally it was MySpace. I mean it was like a MySpace type oh, solution okay. Uh, okay. for for bands. Yeah. Sorry, nice. if I misspoke. No, but I think. Uh, yeah, like even our 14 year old, like I said, do you want, you know, a, a Google Music or an Apple Music mm -hmm. subscription? She said, no, I, I want SoundCloud. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you know, it's just, you know, the, the kids, they talk at school, they get ideas. It's terrible. My kids just want Spotify. They don't understand anything yeah. else. My older kids want Spotify. Um, yeah. They're, they're both Spotify users. But we got this Microsoft thing that does the same thing. No, do you want Groove. That? Hey, by the way. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. I just complain about it all to you. I figure Chris Capicella is listening, so. Mm -hmm. I uh, I love, remember like two years ago at Christmas, Microsoft gave out like tw 20 or 30 albums, right? I do. It was I awesome. I remember that. Yep. And so on my new Windows machine, I was saying, oh, I fired up Groove and downloaded the albums. The, the U2 album, Joshua Tree, it says, at the request of the rights holders, you can't nice. have it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, what? It says purchased. I know well, I didn't well, actually purchase it, it. It probably was just added to your library. I think if you purchased it, you should be able to still get it, right? No. Wow. Everything else 
Sinatra, the Capital Years. So uh, Ariana Grande just released an anniversary edition of that album, and I wonder if it's tied to that. Oh, that's probably why. You know, that's it's very frustrating because I thought I literally I owned just it. bought something on iTunes because it's the only place you can get it electronically. Yeah. And then I had I, I spent time trying to figure out how to download it on my phone when I finally realized what I need to do is download it on my computer and then put it in Google Play Music so I can just access it the way I want to access it. Yeah. It took me about 30 minutes to figure that out. Well, at least I have Sergeant Pepper on here now. Well, that's, that was the album, actually. It was, yeah, uh, you want the new yeah. 50th anniversary. Yep. What you really want, Alex Gumpel got it, I got it too, is the four-CD set with the alternate I takes. And I the can't studio. do physical media. You know, this is a, well, you this rip is it. a two... You rip it. It's a two-disc version. It does have some of the alternate okay, takes. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. And then they did well. But see, the reason it's four is because there's this, the, the original mono mix, and then everybody complains right. about the stereo mix and Sgt. Pepper was just like the Beatles had left... So some some guy says, well, put that in the left channel, that, to put that in the right channel, that's yeah, good, yeah, yeah. ship it. Well, but so this new one, so had, you know, a new, new stereo, stereo remix, remix yeah. amazing. And it sounds I, great. Beautiful, yep. It sounds really good. And then I, the, it has the mono, so that's two discs. And then the third and f the second and third disc are, as I mentioned, yeah, outtakes. Uh, outtakes and studio chatter and fun stuff like that. Yep. And yep. there's a DVD and a Blu-ray in there, and it's a nice set. Comes in a box that has the tape labels from uh, mm -hmm. Abbey Road. Does it have like the mustache? You can remember the when, it, when the album initially came out, it had like those things in the box. Uh, like there was a mustache, yes. like a cardboard There's mustache. There's the cutouts, yes. Yeah. You remember that? What's fun well, about- I don't remember it, I just know it. Yeah, because in 1967, were you even born? I uh, barely, I was <laughs> yeah. a year old. This is cool, because this is one of those 3D, you know, lenticular mm -hmm. 3D things. Um, this is Alex's. Um, he's being very kind because I thought he was going to keep it shrink wrap and sell it in twenty years, but I guess he actually wants to listen to it. But so that's the front. Is the the EMI yeah. tape? The isn't that awesome. awesome? Isn't that awesome? They re and yeah, they include. It's actually beautifully packaged. Oh, he hasn't opened it yet. I won't. I, won't I don't know it. if you looked at my um, office recently, but I don't really have stuff anymore. <laughs> so I can't. You can't. There is the poster. The no, it's okay. The Mister Kite poster's in here, and uh, there's a beautiful book. The original uh, promo poster. Get yep. Sergeant, you know Pepper here now. Here's the uh, Mr. Kite poster that John Lennon wrote the song from. So cool. Mm -hmm. These are the cutouts you were talking about: the mustache and the epaulets. Yep. Very cool. Anyway, they uh, yeah, hundred twenty bucks, something like that, right? Yeah. Um, both. This band is going places, Leo. I think. I they... feel <laughs> that they may have a future. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm. I could be mm -hmm. wrong. Uh, nice packaging, though. And and really, congratulations to uh, EMI for getting me to buy this album like the 23rd time. Yeah. The only <laughs> thing I've bought more than Beatles music is Star Wars movies. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that too. In yep. every form. Oh, Hobbit. Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. I got every form. Oh, that's form. true, too. Yep. Yeah. No, that's fair. They get yeah. you. Mary Jo Foley, save us with the Enterprise <laughs> pick of the week, will you please? All right. All right. I got to bring, bring us back to, to ground here. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm my enterprise pick of the week is something I am sure neither Paul nor Brad nor anyone on <laughs> Windows Weekly covered during my absence. Fair. Uh, there was a pretty big update on what's coming with SharePoint uh, that happened Ooh. right after Build. So for all of you people running SharePoint Server 2016 and wondering if there be another feature pack, there will be another feature pack known as Feature Pack 2, is coming before the end of this calendar year. Nice. And the main thing that it's going to add to SharePoint Server is support for the SharePoint Framework component integration. Mm. I know you've been waiting for that. Oh, it's yeah. coming. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, for people who already are using SharePoint in the cloud through Office 365 or, and or SharePoint Online, you also are going to be getting a bunch of new capabilities before the end of the year as well. Um, one of the most interesting ones is you're going to be getting more personalized search built in with SharePoint, especially around people. So folks who followed SharePoint for a while may remember Microsoft was going to do this knowledge management portal that was codenamed Infopedia. It was something they announced a couple of years ago. Instead of doing that, they're going to be building in this more personalized uh, people's search capability right into SharePoint. So 
if you're working in a company and you want to find out uh, who in your institution has knowledge about a certain topic, you'll be able to type that in through search and say, who knows about blah at my company? And it will return results thanks to its integration with the Microsoft Graph and give you some suggestions of people who you might contact if you need more information on a particular topic. So that could be pretty handy for big companies where you're wondering like, who here knows about this? I know somebody does and I'd like to connect with them. Uh, there'll be other SharePoint capabilities coming around more integration with Power Apps and Flow uh, and as well as some other things I don't think they fully announced at this event right after build. But they did say at the Ignite conference that's coming up, Microsoft Ignite in September, um, I believe it's September, uh, they will be talking about all of these things and more in much greater depth. So stay tuned. So that's the enterprise pick this week. Very cool. And the code name is Pennsylvania. <laughs> I know. Oh. I should have done that. I, <laughs> I there, didn't think. Is there a code name I, I don't think there is a, no. I don't think there is a Pennsylvania, but... Um, there is something codenamed Vermont. There should be. <laughs> there should be. And maybe there will be thank, now that they know Paul's moving now that there. Now they know. The right. Pennsylvania uh, but project. In the interim, we have Project Vermont. This is pretty interesting, especially given uh, the fact that Microsoft kind of got rid of many of the people they acquired when they bought Nokia. This, project Vermont's all about camera research that Microsoft is continuing to do. Ah inside the company, despite the fact that they get rid of a lot of those Nokia camera experts. So um, Vermont's a Microsoft research project. It's about improving digital camera performance using curved image sensors. And Microsoft has a prototype of, the, of these kinds of sensors somewhere in Microsoft research. And they note in their research paper that curving the image surface can dramatically improve performance along many axes, huh. resolution, light gathering, illumination, uniformity, and also reduce system size, cost, and complexity. So they are continuing to do a lot of camera research inside Microsoft that uh, may make it into digital cameras if Microsoft research figures out how to productize this. Huh. Interesting. Codename Vermont, Vermont for some reason. Project Not sure Vermont. why. Because that's where the maple syrup comes from. That could be it. <laughs> and uh, I think it's time for a beer. We've done such a good job, you guys. We can reward ourselves with a Some lovely beer. Yes. Mm -hmm. And pretzels. Yes. <laughs> so I, I had to make one of my beer picks something I had in Japan because I had a lot of craft beer oh, when really? I was in Japan. They actually, you know, just the beer I've had like Asahi, Asahi and, uh, and uh, yep. Sapporo are actually pretty good. Yeah, they're the big okay. Commercial you know, beers. they're not bad. Yeah, they're you're right, and they're you can get Kurs. those anywhere. Yeah, you can get them anywhere. You can get them in vending machines everywhere <laughs> in really? Japan. How it's funny. crazy how easy it is to get them. Um, <laughs> but we tried um, on our trip to sample some of the craft beer that's being made in Japan now, and it's being made all over the country by different breweries there in Japan, and they're making a lot of American style beers, which is very interesting. I had a New England style IPA brewed in Japan there wow. that was as good as anything I have had in the U.S. Wow. So that's not my pick. Um, but I did <laughs> get to try a beer called Ginger Stout by a brewing company in Osaka called Mino, M-I-N-O-H. Uh, Mino Ginger Stout, I guess the company that is distributing it is A-J-I Beer. It's a regular... Um, stout, just like any stout you'd have here, except there's a hint of ginger in it. Not overwhelming ginger, but Sounds just good. enough ginger to be very interesting and subtle. Nice. Um, I had it at a place called Craft Beer Works Kamikaze, huh. which is a really cool craft beer bar in Osaka. If you ever get to go there, um, excellent beers. Looks like any American craft beer bar um, has really cool taps, cool glasses, and um, it was really fun to see what they're doing with craft beer now in Japan. I want to get so all I would your recommend notes. if you're I there. Go. I, I, know. I can't wait to go. I'm so excited. Yeah, if you if you uh, follow me on Untapped, I checked in a lot of craft beer oh, in good. Japan okay. from all different places. So yeah, I, I would recommend Minnow Ginger Stout if you have a chance to sample any of those craft beers. Very nice. 
And I guess we should do a couple quick calendar updates. You guys are going to uh, be busy. More traveling. Yeah, more traveling. Not just Paul moving, yep. but we're going to be traveling too. <laughs> <laughs> just adding more stress to Paul's life. Um, June 19th to 23rd, coming up in a couple weeks, we're going to the Netherlands. We're going to be in Harlem at the Office 365 Engage show. And we're going to be doing Windows Weekly live from there. Oh, boy. As well as having a meetup there before the show. Uh, so if you're around it, either at the show and or in that vicinity, we're going to try to make it so you can come to the meetup um, and hopefully come to the show taping that we're going to be doing good. there. Live. And I will be back for that. That's going to be my first uh, Wednesday back. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, good. Then um, in July, July 9th to 13th, Microsoft's Worldwide Partner Show, which is now called Microsoft Inspire, is happening in Washington, D.C. And oh we're going to be doing Windows Weekly Live there with some special guests we hear um, mm. to be announced soon. You have to go out uh, early to go to the 4th of July in D.C., I hope. I know, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, right before. I wonder what the and, 4th of July is like in Philadelphia. You know, hmm. I was there in 1976. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. Uh, it was, I assume that was pretty good. It was pretty good. <laughs> it was like a big birthday party. It was fun. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we decided to go uh, hang out in Philly for the well, bicentennial. It was a good idea. Wow. I don't yeah. remember much, so it must have been really fun. <laughs> I have very few memories of Philadelphia. But anyway. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, there's a farmer's market in Philadelphia. You go in there and you will have the mm. best hot, warm pretzel. They dip it in butter. It's the nice, it's the, uh, it's the nice little Amish girl. Back to know? pretzels again. Yeah. There's the sheer number of times you've mentioned pretzels. It's on the this best pretzel I ever had. I still have <laughs> dreams about it. I fantasize about it. Mm. Mm. How close like to pretzels. Philly are you? You're not that close. But an hour. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, really? Wow. Well, will you, you will you be in? Will you already have moved by the time of Inspire? No. No. Uh, no. So yeah. one of the little uh, tricks between it, behind this move is that it happened so quickly, <laughs> and happened at such a time that we had already booked our home swap, which oh. we are contractually obligated to oh, oh, wow. fulfill. Like we would have to pay for their plane tickets. So um, we can't move until after the home swap, which is mid-August. So they're going to okay. come in your house. They're going to come. Stay which will have here. hopefully have been sold. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be very confusing. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. All right. But anyway, anyway, back to Inspire. Yeah. If you guys Sorry. are going to the Microsoft Partner Show, we're going to be doing Windows Weekly Live there and um, having guests. And I'm also going to be doing a session there about reading the Redmond tea leaves separately. Ooh. From from that. So you should wear like a, a bandana around your head and have a, um, <laughs> like a, like, what do you call it? Gypsy a, Mary Jo. Yeah. What do you call it? Like, like a ball. I thought you were going to say I should crystal be wearing ball. tea leaves. Crystal, crystal ball. Didn't say. Yeah. <laughs> or wear some tea leaves. <laughs> you could spread I tea see. leaves around the stage, like instead of rose petals. Yeah. Great things yeah. in your future. This is why Paul's not marketing. <laughs> I, later. I see a mobile device in your future. <laughs> Right. The um, future is hazy. <laughs> Very cloudy. cloudy. It just says capitulate. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, what fun. You guys are going to yeah. do some real traveling. That's great. Uh, yeah. I'll be here at the uh, home base dialing you in. Good. Yeah, but you have an awesome trip coming yeah, up. Yeah, you have a big trip I won't before. see you. I'm going to Machu Picchu. I'm leaving Monday. Yep. So I will actually be, I think I'll be in Let's see. I, we land in Lima Monday night, spend Monday, Tuesday, fly to Cusco Wednesday morning. What is the time change? It's just three hours. It's East Coast time. It's your time. Is it really the yeah. West Coast of? Yeah. The South East. America no. Yeah. The East West Coast. Coast is the East Coast. Yeah. It's confusing. It's Eastern. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. Eastern. So um, and we'll be in Cusco. And actually, I don't understand how globes work, but that's fascinating to me. I, I, <laughs> it's it not how you think right. it is. I know. Look at a map. You'll see. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, so we'll be on a train to Machu Picchu right about when Windows Weekly Wow, happens. Nice. Yeah, that should be a lot of fun. And then we're going on to the Galapagos in uh, Ecuador after that. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. It's right. going to be fun. I'm bringing a big camera. Yeah. Taking lots of pictures. I won't be using my yep. 6P for that. I'm going to I'm gonna bring a <laughs> Get some pictures of the uh, iguanas, the tortoises, the blue-footed mm. boobies. It's going to be fun. Okay. I can't wait. 
Well, thank you, uh, Paul and Mary Jo. It's been great. We have a uh, great trip. I won't be back. Yeah, I have think, an awesome time. I think we got, I can't remember, is it Megan? Somebody, Jason, Megan, Father Robert will be filling in mm-hmm. next Wednesday and the Wednesday after, but I'll be back for your Holland show, your Dutch show. Great. Nice. We do Windows Weekly Wednesdays, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 1800 UTC if you want to tune in. Or, uh, I guess, 1 p.m. Machu Picchu Time. <laughs> I was the Foursquare Mayor of Machu Picchu four years ago. I'm hoping to reclaim my title. <laughs> <laughs> you should, it may, at the very least, meet the guy who usurped you. And- I'm pissed. I was mad. <laughs> I had it for like two months. I kept checking. Yep, still the Mayor of Machu Picchu. I figured I'm going to own this one. Some kid comes along and takes it. But you know yeah. what? No one uses Foursquare anymore. So sure. I have I have a chance that I could I could end my days as the mayor of Machu Picchu. God, we should all great. have such dreams. I has I have a dream. <laughs> I have a vision, a future plan. Uh you can watch this show live if you wish. We're on Ustream and YouTube Live, twitch.tv slash twit. Uh, or just go to our website, twit.tv slash live. You can find all those streams. But if you can't be here live, you can always get it after the fact just to download a copy. And a couple of ways to do that, twit.tv slash WW might be the easiest. If you use a podcast program, just subscribe. Then you know, then all the, all the mystery is gone. You'll just automatically get a new one. It just happens magically. All, Leo, all the mystery is gone. <laughs> it's already I think gone. We can agree to that. It left a long time ago. Paul Thorat, Mary Jo Foley. Paul's at Thorat.com. That's where he hangs his hat. And of course, his books are at leanpub.com. And he does the What the Tech podcast with Andrew Zarian on Andrew's Network, which is Guys from Queens. Guys from Queens. The guys from Queens. Are you still going to be able to do that when you're from Pennsylvania? Well, I, I'm from Dedham now. Right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're an honor. What I'm worried about is who's going to make Dedham great again when I'm gone. I know. That's right. You've put Dedham on the map. Mary Jo Foley. There's going to be a hole. <laughs> There's a hole. <laughs> Mary Jo Foley is at All About Microsoft, or ZDNet blog. And I'm glad to have you back. Welcome back. Thanks. We'll be back next week. Well, they will for Windows Weekly. <laughs> See you then.